Good afternoon there, everybody. Today is the matchup between, I believe it is. I already forgot who's playing today. Oh my gosh. I'm pretty sure it's Thirsty Bastards uh, versus Lycus Empire. Now, Lycus Empire might be unfamiliar to you, but uh, it is a, uh, it's just, uh, let me figure out who it actually was before. It was Impact Esports. Right. It's one of the Impacts. Uh, it's either Esports Academy or the other one, Elite, that they had. Um, so it's one of the Impacts, and I'm looking back. It's not Academy. It's not Elite. So it has to be the latter. Um, but yes, they are under a new name called Lycus Empire. Yeah, and so I'm very excited to see what this uh, new org can bring to the table. If they can kind of maybe, you know, bring some support that they didn't have before or something. But uh, and we'll see if they can, you know, sh like play better because of it. Um, but we're going to be having a best of three. Uh, you'll have dual rogue here for the entirety of it. However, I will be leaving after the first map due to uh, real world obligations. But I'm very excited to see how this first potential third of the match goes. Yes, uh, they have played against each other in the past. Um, I know it's under different organization and everything like that, but I'm not 100% sure if it's a new roster. I can actually look real quick. Um, but besides that, I don't believe it's a new roster. No, it does not look like it's a new roster. So... Uh, they have played against each other in the past with Lycus taking the win, and we went all the way in the best of three. We went all three maps, and the last map went into overtime match point with Lycus winning 8-7. Now, I could be wrong, and I'm sure somebody in chat will correct me if I am wrong about Lycus's... Lycus's? I guess that's how you would do the... Uh, uh, how you would say that. Uh, their rosters staying the same or being different. So my in chat, I have it pulled up. They will correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm sure. And uh, so, what do you expect to see from them? Like, what do you think that um, the crazy or thirsty bastards did to try to like you know come back and fix what they did wrong last match? So I believe if I'm not a hundred percent. I could be wrong on this, but I believe Thirsty Bastards won the first one. I'm pulling up the results right now. Um, let me see. Yeah, Thirsty Bastards won the first one, lost the second one in the same fashion that they won, and then, like I said, went into overtime match point 8-7. So what Thirsty Bastards could do differently in the whole scheme of things is that they could you know, be... A little bit less aggressive. I believe that was the, their downfall last time, unfortunately. And I would like to see a little bit less aggression for them and them trying to control the situation, especially on defense. I think that's where their aggression was a little bit too much. They were taking fights that they didn't need to. But hopefully they've learned their lessons. They, Like I said, they've gone up against this team before. So they know what to expect. If it is the exact same roster last time, they had the VODs. They have, you know, what map would be good for this, what map would not be good for this. So hopefully they can change all of that around and hopefully it will go into a best of three. Yeah, for sure. And like you said, best of three is when they actually go all three maps. Um, it is very interesting, very fun to see. Um, so yeah, hopefully we do see that. And so what kind of maps do you expect to see based on their, these two teams, uh, play style? Um, I believe that Thirsty Bastards, again, like I said, they are the more of a aggression type. From what I remember, I want to say Impact just made some stupid mistakes. I, I don't want to say stupid mistakes. Uh, I feel like that's a harsh word just like minor mistakes that would cost them around when they should have easily won, you know, 1v2 situation or 1vx or whatever in their previous uh, fights with uh, Thirsty Bastards. So hopefully 
comparing the two uh, gameplays, I think we're in a pretty good match match setup for this one, hopefully. But what what do you have to expect? Well, uh, considering the you said you know Thirsty Bastards is a more aggressive focused team, I would expect them to either go to a maps like Coastline or uh, you know like yeah Coastline in particular because it's so you know it's it's the most brain dead map I guess you could say you, you, there's not a lot of strats you need for it you could kind of just run in and gun um, or they could go for the, kind of the opposite route and go for uh, like Clubhouse or Oregon where the strategies are so well developed that you don't really need a lot of coordination to go for them and you can just kind of you know do them with your eyes closed blindfolded um, and that could help them I don't know play a little bit more structured than they normally would uh, but as we say that the map bands are starting to go out and coastline will be taken out first by Lycus. They don't want to play on that aggressive map against Thirsty Bastards, so I do not blame them whatsoever. I don't blame them either. I was trying to pull up the VOD from the last one just to see who banned what, um, and I couldn't find it. I think it's already been the amount of time that Twitch does on this, uh, for them to have VODs, but you know it is what it is. And so we are actually going to see Oregon being banned out by Thirsty Bastards Gaming, which is, I feel like, pretty par uh, for the course for them. Um, Oregon is more, I want to say, like, I don't want to say less aggressive of a map, but definitely less. Uh, you you kind of have to be those tight quarters. There's no, it's not, yeah, it's not you're, a big, you're, it's you're not often, a big map. Yeah, you're often holding on to, like, individual areas for like most around you know as a defender or as an attacker you need to you know use a lot of utility to clear out those defenders so yeah i definitely can see why thirsty bastards wouldn't want to go there and then like empire on the other hand will be going to clubhouse for their first pick uh so that is very similar oregon a very utility heavy map so they're going to be trying to win on utility game here against thirsty bastards you know thirsty bastards going to pick villa for their for their first pick so that is very interesting to me because Villa is kind of an enigma where you have very in like very sophisticated setups, but you also have a lot of room for individual players to you know go and frag out because of how big the map is. Um, again, somebody in chat will correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Villa is where Thirsty Bastards took Lycus when they first played, and I believe they won 7-3 again so my in chat will correct me if i'm wrong and unfortunately like i said i was trying to pull up the maps just to see who played what but i think that's the reason they went to villa right that definitely makes sense then and then uh in the meantime theme park and cafe doskinski will also be banned out leaving consulate as our decider map if we need it uh now sides are being picked um like us, Empire are going to be starting the attack on Clubhouse as the Thirsty Bastards did get to choose. So no surprise that they would choose to go as defense first on Clubhouse. Now, I would expect Lycus to take defense on Villa uh, first, and they will do so. And then the third one, I'm not sure how it works, if it's a coin toss or what, but we'll have to see it if we get there. Yep. And again, like you said, it, and it looks like it's going to be like is actually attacking first uh, on consulate with thirsty bastards on defense. So, thirsty bastards, they are in clubhouse defense first, which is interesting because to me, clubhouse is a pretty defense sided map. It's very easy to defend, but that's most maps in Rainbow Six Siege. Most maps are very defense sided. So, I think they are going to have the upper hand when it comes to the map bands with them going to the first map on defense first and then consulate on defense first if we need that third map i believe they have the upper hand going into the map picks yeah absolutely and i mean the, yeah the fact that they were able to choose defense on the majority of the maps there uh like a, like even like if we get to the third map then we'll be starting defense that does give them a solid advantage there i mean even though you're technically able to play you know both the sides the same amount uh in terms of rounds just having the 
the defense on the on the first half and being able to you know pull up a lead like that it is very uh very good uh, as a like for your morale as a team to be able to do that and so i do think that thirsty bastards does have a definite yet slight advantage here and actually i completely forgot i believe again somebody will correct me if i am wrong bridge was playing for impact on the last time they played, and now he has gone to Thirsty Bastard Gaming. So I'm interested to see who got picked up by the Lycus Empire to replace Bridge. Bridge was a very good player from what I remember and everything. Yeah, and like you said, uh, I mean, just bringing a player over from another team, then uh, that's going to be tough for the for uh, Lycus Empire because you know they're going to have their strats uh, potentially uh, not not necessarily leaked but you know the bridge is going to know how they play and they're going to be able to maybe counteract that a little bit yeah let me see um I have it up on Gilded right now and I can look at the Lycus's team page I think they still yeah bridge is still there so I believe that they did change from impact to uh thirsty bastards i believe so like we said it's going to be very interested to see how he plays on thirsty bastards is he going to hopefully he will mix well with the team and hopefully they will be able to come out with a victory and i'm not sure if we said this but this is the finals for the first half of uh this round and it is a we have said it is best of three so impact and thirsty are competing in the finals yeah that's uh very interesting um yeah the fact there's a rematch as well just means that there's so much more at stake here uh because of the fact that you know the two teams are they've played against each other before so they have you know that much more animosity towards each other um and they're just going to be trying so hard to win this because of the fact that it's the finals. And I'm very excited to see that because it's not every day that you can see the team go, you know, like full throttle like this that we're going to see here. Uh, Cause you know, these teams are going to want to win very, very badly. Yes. And I would expect, you know, each match to be uh, pretty close, hopefully as we go forward, but what kind of bands would you expect? as we're still waiting for the last two remaining players to get in, what kind of uh, operator bands would you expect for our first map of Clubhouse? Well, for Clubhouse, uh, you know, it's a very basic map, very basic bands, most likely. We'll see a Thatcher band, most likely, potentially a Maverick band, if we're feeling a little bit feisty. <laughs> um, and then on defense, we'll likely see a Mira band and potentially a Ked band, um, if, you know, the... Maverick and the Thatcher both band, I would expect to see it. Um, if not, then possibly, you know, we'll, we'll my or Dagger band to try to avoid that utility meta. But the the second band on defense is a little bit more up in the air for what it's going to be. Yep. Um, but we'll almost definitely see, you know, the Thatcher and the Mirror band, and then maybe Maverick, maybe Kid, but well, it depends on the attacker band, I think. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a Maverick band or even an ace band get kind of get rid of those hard breach utility ops um maverick's more you know you can use his blowtorch in any situation you don't have to worry about if it's the walls electrified or anything like that you can still use his blowtorch excuse me um and on defense like you said really it's going to be all up in the air eventually of just who 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 they decide wants to be banned for that day could be with my um with you where i wouldn't be surprised if we saw a k ban and i wouldn't bet on a uh, valkyrie ban but that's always a possibility as well but i don't see it happening tonight yeah the only map i could really see a valkyrie ban being a you know more likely possibility is on consulate if we get there because of how small the map is and how like much area those um, Valkyrie camps can cover outside and the palm trees makes it very difficult to see them, but very easy to you know see you. 
uh, with those buffer camps, but that's not the here nor there because we're going to be trying to get into uh, the map very soon, Clubhouse, as soon as we can get all 10 players into the lobby. Yep, and we're uh, pretty close to it. It looks like some are on the wrong side right now, which is pretty funny, but uh, so yeah, we're still waiting on three of the players right now, and then we will get started. And once those three join in, we will get started with the day and hopefully some great siege. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, like you say, we're just kind of waiting for a little bit longer. We're waiting on two players as of right now. Um, and we'll get the, as soon as we get them into the lobby, we will be starting the match. Um, so hopefully that's very shortly. And yeah, there's not a whole lot more to say, but we'll keep waffling as long as it takes. Um, we have just, yeah, like, I mean, I don't, I don't really know what to say at this point. I mean, I guess we could talk about how the, uh, like, you know, like you said before, it's the finals. So these teams are going to be extra motivated to win here. Um, yep. That'll be interesting to see. Well, so I believe of how I could be wrong uh, on how this works. <laughs> so if they win the finals, let's say Lycus wins in the finals, they will be in the same group as Impact Elite. Um, I believe that's how it went because Impact Elite won their whole group. It could be the best, the top four teams from each group go on. So it could be possible that we see Impact Elite, Lumberjacks, or maybe it's, it would be the top two. I'm sorry about that because there's only four teams per round. And again, Hans would probably uh, correct me on this. So but we know for for a fact that Impact Elite one against Lumberjacks. So let's say Lycus, again, wins the finals today. They will be playing against Impact Elite in the next stage, which will be some very, very great siege. I believe it's the top two teams from Group A and top two teams from Group B will go into their own group and the bottom four or bottom two from Group A and bottom two from Group B will go into their own group. But we'll see. I'm not 100% sure on the uh, aspect of all that stuff. So, But that would be very interesting if it was that way. Yeah, definitely. And you know, we're just waiting on one player now. Um, having a little bit of trouble getting him into the lobby, but we will as soon as we can. And uh, yeah, so the fact that I've I've kind of touched on this before, but the fact that Lycus Empires, you know, it used to be Impact, but now that they're under a different um, org, I'm interested to see, like, you know, how they're going to debut, how how well they're going to debut on this org, because the fact that they have a new org is going to be probably um, motivating them as well, because uh, you know they want to be, you know, giving them a good show uh, for their first match on air. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Hans just said there's no bracket reset. So I don't believe the brackets. Um, like this also has roster change. Scorp just joined them. And he's making his eSport de debut. So that's very exciting. I'm very excited to see how he uh, can join with Lycus and make them the team that they need to be. Or uh, maybe, maybe not. But um, we do have all players in the lobby now, so we'll be starting the match very shortly. Um, we're just uh, waiting on you know the actual the match to actually start. So yep. uh, we can hopefully get that underway. We will uh, transition into the match. All right. Uh, hopefully it will be relatively soon. Like you said, we have the last one uh, joined, and now it looks like the match is beginning as we go to Clubhouse for the first match. Like us on attack, thirsty bastards on defense, and I'm very excited about this. Uh, as you said, for the first ban, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a Thatcher ban coming out from thirsty bastards. Go ahead and get them out of the way. Everybody knows that it's coming. Even if you play unranked or ranked, you you see it coming. Yeah, and so Munch. In case anybody here doesn't speak French, I'm, I'm sure. 
most of the chat does speak French, but he's he just forgot to change all his or he wasn't able to finish changing all his skins off to the default or to Pro League skins before the match started. So he will be coming back, uh, rejoining very shortly as soon as he is able to do that. But yeah, like we were saying before, Thatcher does get banned off first, so no surprise there. Um, the second ban though is going to be pivotal in pivotal in uh, determining the bans on defense, but. Blackbeard ban, that looks like a target ban to me because I mean, Clubhouse in particular doesn't really have many window, much window play at all, um, other than maybe on, you know, that CCTV balcony uh, a little bit. But that's interesting that the Blackbeard's banned. I'm sure that is a target ban towards one of the players on Thirsty Bastards. It has to be a ban or a target ban, as you don't really see many people at that high of a level playing Blackbeard, so it has, I agree with you, it has to be a target ban. As the first defense ban comes out, it's going to be Valkyrie. Valkyrie has all of her cameras. She's going to offer so much uh, intel to the defense. Yeah, and it, it appears that, like, his empire just really hates the Navy SEALs, I guess, um, <laughs> interestingly enough. But, yeah, so, I mean, obviously that's not actually the case. It's just... Interesting that they banned the two operators from that one CTU, uh, but the last ban will be an Echo, which is um, a little bit odd now because of the fact that he's been so heavily nerfed with his cameras no longer being invisible, but he can still be an issue and a, and a pain to deal with uh, if you're pushing late into the round. And it looks like now they are calling for a rehost, as you said earlier. Munchies, unfortunately, did not change all of his skins back to uh, his original operator or the original skins, I'm sorry. And so they are calling for a rehost as he's still not in the lobby. But we got the timer paused. And so hopefully we can get him back in without having to. Uh, to rehost. Yeah, and um, Sai also having the Tatranka Elite on. I mean, I'm not sure if that's uh, intentional or not, but it's definitely not allowed by, like, you know, by technicality. Um, yep. So that is interesting to see. So we may have to have a rehost here, and it does appear that everybody on Thirsty Bastards is leaving, so that is yep. unfortunate. That is very unfortunate as we see the, uh, every, like you said, everybody in Thirsty Bastards leaving. And now everybody in Lycus is leaving as well. So, rehost. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the bands? I know we kind of talked about them a little bit with the Blackbeard being a very interesting band. And then uh, Valkyrie, maybe they just hate the Navy SEALs operators. So what do you think about them also banning the Echo as well? Yeah, so it seems that Lycus and Bayer kind of went for target bans there with the uh, Blackbeard and the Valkyrie ban. Um, I'm sh I, I personally haven't really seen enough of uh, Thirsty Bastards gaming to really like say if there's one player that like, you know, plays Blackbeard and like he is a monster on it. Um, but that's almost certainly the case. The Valkyrie as well is a little bit of a target ban, I think, although it is a lot more conventional than the Blackbird ban, uh, for sure. Um, the other two bans from Thirsty Bastards were a lot more default. However, the defensive ban on Thatcher um, is a little bit odd, considering, like I said before, the uh, huge nerfs he's gotten recently. Um, so um, that might be a little bit of a target ban. However, some people just really don't like those Yokai drones, and they do not like being, you know, blasted and zapped with them so that is probably a reason for it that's very true you know you don't want to be trying to clutch a situation and then you get echo blast because you're more focused on the wall in front of you or the layout in front of you you're not going to look at the ceiling for uh, an enemy operator at all so your one of your last thoughts, if you know that there's an echo still on board, is to hey, I'm going to look at the ceiling, see if there's a yoga around when I'm getting shoot through the wall. You're not going to do that. You're going to be more focused on the enemy operator in front of you than you are the yokai at that point. So I can see why they're going to get rid of him 
over a Wumai or a Jaeger with the Jaeger, uh, I guess, nerf. Uh, some people call it a buff. Some people call it a nerf. I call it a nerf where his Jaeger device only goes off for um, for the first projectile. And then it, I think it's a 10 second delay. And then it turns back on. So I can see why they would ban an Echo over a Jaeger or even a Wamai. Yeah, and Wamai also got nerfed uh, recently too with him losing his shield and also losing one of his um, uh, magnets as well. So he is a lot less powerful than he used to be. He now only has a total of four magnets without he crews throughout the round rather than the five he had before. Um, so that is definitely a factor in him not being banned. And yeah, the echo being banned is a little bit of a comfort ban, I feel. Yeah, I agree with that. You can't, you know, if you get rid of the uh, echo ban, you're not going to have plant one plant denial. You still have the smoke, and nobody in pro league is going to, or esports is going to ban smoke. If we do, it would be a big shock to everybody <laughs> in the uh, game. Yeah, Smoke is just that pivotal operator. He's so powerful that he almost never gets banned because, like, there's other operators that somewhat fill his role with uh, Plant Denial. Like, you know, like, you know, Echo somewhat can counter plants, but with those Zerokai drones being visible now, they can be shot very easily. Chanka is much closer to Smoke in that, but he's just a lot worse in that. And he's also much harder to make rotates with because of how uh, little actual. Uh, you know, the, the 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 turret that he has as a primary doesn't do quite as much um, rotation as as the smoke's shotgun will, and yeah. you know, smoke also has the SMG gun, which is so powerful in the right hands. It means that smoke is like such a vital operator for um, you know the the defense that if he gets banned, it's gonna like cause havoc on both sides. Oh, that would be so great just to see him ban just one time, just to see what the teams do. That would be amazing, but it's never going to happen. Or I guess we can never say never. But um, as we're, I believe we're slowly getting back into it, um, I really don't know what all to say except for uh, any predictions on the scoreline. I know it's, as casters were supposed to say, a little impartial. Uh, towards everybody, but what do you what do you think is going to happen tonight? Well, the fact that Thirsty Bastards are on the defense first means that I'm guessing that they're going to be aiming to go at least four to two on the split. Uh, if they are feeling good, they might even try to go for five one. Um, however, that's a lot more difficult because you need to win uh, that tertiary site at least once in order to do that. Um, but as for Lycus, if they can go 3-3 on the split, they're in a very good position in order to take the match. And depending on how that first split goes, we could either see, you know, like a decisive win for Thirsty Bastards or we could see Lycus Empire, you know, either just win it outright, like without much of a challenge, or if uh, Thirsty Bastards puts up uh, more of a fight, then we could see, you know, uh, Lycus with like a comeback on their defensive side. But we'll have to see as we launch back into the match for hopefully the last time yep and we are starting again so as i said before clubhouse first map like us on attack thirsty bastards gaming on defense and with the band picks coming out or not the band picks i'm sorry the picks coming out nothing too surprising from either team so far uh it's interesting that they have a cade and the bandit, maybe they're going to try to get as much electrified. Electri electrified. I'm sorry, I forgot the word for electrified. As I said, that it looks like they're going to potentially six pick off the bandit onto more of a roamer type, and Wax is going to be playing the vigil. Uh, so it looks like there's going to be about two potential roamers, and pretty much one mid and two anchors. So I'm interested to see how the Rome game is in for Thirsty Bastards. 
Yeah, the bandit pick might have been a like a tr kind of a way to try to throw uh, Lycus off of the fact that they are going to the basement first, which is a little bit unusual, but not unheard of. Um, you know, the bandit and the kid combo kind of works a lot better. Not even not even a lot better, but it's just a lot more common on um, that top CCTV floor uh, rather than on this site because on this site you're really only trying to protect the hatches. I mean, church wall you want to generally protect, but it's not quite as important. It's a lot easier to defend uh, like without using electricity or those meat jammers. So that's definitely a factor in that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and we're going to see a very early pick as Munch gets the kill off of Bridge. A uh, very early pick, uh, Bridge up night, or I'm sorry, Munch. I believe he was just trying to uh, get a little bit of spawn pick, and that's actually going to be one of your hard breach. That's the Habana off the floor. So now you only have the Maverick torch to deal with the hatches, and if they're electrified, it's going to be a little bit harder. Not necessarily, as we said earlier, he can still open up a hatch, but he's only going to be open one hatch, most likely. Yeah, I mean, he did recently get that uh, buff with his, uh, he got an extra canister, so I think he is, uh, if you're, you know, a pretty good Maverick player, you should be able to get at least two hatches, um, but it does take a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of energy to do so. Um, so we might only actually see him get one. And he's going to be trying to go for Kitchen, or Scorp is actually in Kitchen right now. He's down to about half health, but he did manage to get a little bit of damage onto Luff. Um, but Luff will actually get the kill onto uh, Lennox. So that is now the Maverick down as well. That is extremely bad for uh, Lycus because they have no hard breach left anymore. They're going to need to push down through the through those narrow passages into dirt or into blue and into uh, the main hallway. That's extremely bad for them. Yeah, and like you said, there's both of the hard breach potential result. So now all the uh, defenders have to do, they can't get hatch. So they're going to have to try and take sites themselves. Yeah, Scorp's going to be trying to destroy up above, but you know, where his holes are, you're going to know about where he is. And as I said right there, the laugh is going to get kill on Scorp. And now it is 2v4 with the Sophia and the Ash and again the defenders uh I, I don't know why i'm talking anymore as it's a 1v4 the last attacker they know where he is and so they're just going to be waiting for him to show his head he is going to get one pick off though as of 1v3 but pinos is going to get the last kill onto laugh and take the first win a lot with um what was that a 3k a 4k beautiful play coming out from that lesion um, just playing off of site, like, or on site, I was actually uh, the whole time there. And excellent play coming up from him. Excellent first round coming up from Thirsty Bastards. Very convincing. And if they can bring that energy into the rest of the rounds, um, I do feel like it's going to be a steamroll here. However, the fact that, you know, Munch did get that easy pick onto the uh, Hibana there, uh, just through that bullet hole in the barricade. Does tell me that that it is kind of a fluke, and I can't really expect to see that happening like every single round. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if they, you know, tried to protect, protect. I'm sorry, their hard breachers just a little bit more as they go into where the hard breachers really shine. They're going to go to the uh, the third floor, I believe, or second floor. I'm sorry, CCTV and cash. And so they need their hard breachers to survive for this part. So you can open up CCTV wall and have access to a pretty easy planting uh, spot because that's the name of the game of Siege. It's either get all the kills or plant the diffuser. So I really hope that they are able to keep all of their hard breachers alive, but we'll see as we go on. Yeah, and I think we'll see the Habana trying to go for those garage walls with the Maverick trying to Maverick trick open the CCTV wall. Habana is not particularly useful for that CCTV wall because she makes such small holes, and you know Maverick can make you know the entire wall soft so that Sophia or potentially Ash or this or the Sludge can open it up for them. Uh, but it does look like it's just a uh, mute jammer, or not even right now. So that's interesting to see, and you see Scorp also open it preemptively, open up the wall in case 
uh, so they don't have to use the utility from the Zofia like later on in order to open up. Yes, and you know, I don't believe the wall is even electrified, so I'm interested that they probably just decided to mute jam it instead of Cade using his electrical. I believe he used it somewhere else, but I'm not 100% sure where. As I'm, pretty, were... I'm pretty sure the electric claw was used, both of them were used for um, garage. Oh, okay, so gotcha. To prevent the garage wall from being open, which is important because, uh, yeah, it's important. But then Bridge going to get the kill into Crystal, so he was the first kill onto the, he was the first kill last round, but this time he gets the first kill. As the Malusi goes down, that's going to be a C4 off the board uh, for White, or for Thirsty Bastards, so that is a huge pick. Yes, it is, and so it seems like Bridge is getting some call-outs as to somebody being around that area in uh, the uh, bedroom area, and Sai is just going to be waiting and watching as he's expecting somebody to be coming in through that CCTV area. Laugh is going to be rotating, and Sai should be hearing that the Maverick is below, and it looks like they're going to try their best to uh, take garage at this point so maybe they'll be able to do it yeah much as though in a low pit right now he might be able to get a free pick or two um if he's if he's like plays his cards right and the nades attempt to come out to clear out the player i think it's uh sai yeah in practice but he doesn't even get a single point of damage on him so that is very important uh because he is able to just hold on to ccdv from these rafters with relative ease because of that 1.5x and the tight angle he's holding but pepino also going into uh construction he's gonna fight with oh, luck no. he actually wins it out that is awful from pepino that is not what you need to happen laugh it does though it does take a lot of damage um but he doesn't actually kill the person attacking him and now it's a 2v3 for uh Lycus. but Lycus does go down to one person as linux is the only person left on the board he does manage to take raptor's control but it might not be enough. With 20 seconds on the board and he doesn't have Diffuser, he's going to need to go for frags. Um, and both the players on Thirsty Bastards are you know, playing off his site and he is poisoned as well, so he's going to need to take that out before he can play it. He'll grab Diffuser, but with seven seconds left, it might be too late. And he doesn't know the person's in red. He sees something, but it's not may not be enough. He does get the first go to Loft, but it's not even going to be enough as Jaeger stays alive, munches, winning the round on time. Yes, and really the big pick was when Pinos, he should have got that pick on the Legion rotating. I'm not exactly, can remember, but I can look. It was left. that was actually, or Love Harry, I'm not exactly sure how to say his name, but um, he, he didn't know that Pinos was there, so Pinos should have easily got that kill, and unfortunately he didn't, and that's where, in my opinion, if Pinos was alive, how differently would that round have gone? Yeah, the fact, like, you could see a Luff's, like, from Luff's, like, no shaking, that he was extremely surprised uh, to see uh, Pepino there, but it he did end up actually getting the kill off of it, and I think that was vital for uh, Thirsty Sebastian to win the game or win the round. Uh, but now they're going to be going for the tertiary site, uh, in bedroom and gym, so that is a much harder site to hold than I the other two sites. So, not be surprised to see uh, Thirsty Bastards lose this. However, the, with the way they've been playing, I would also not be surprised to see them uh, win it either because they've just been playing lights out so far, and it has been extremely impressive to see. Yes, and really, like it's had potential to win not necessarily maybe the first round but the second round they had a lot of potential to win as it was just the little mistakes that added up you know it started with pinos not winning his gunfight and then it just went all downhill from there as they tried the refrag and munch that oh, that's what's hurting no. them right there munch, that. he is doing what he needs to do as a roamer he's getting a very early pick within the first 10 seconds, making it a 4v5. They are now going to have to work a very sharp uphill as that goes down your sledge. And right now, the Sophia is taking damage and Thirsty Bastards, they are half and half in what I said earlier. They are being less aggressive, but they also bring in the aggression when it needs to be brought as well. Absolutely. I mean, they're playing very, like, carefully, but when they are, like, taking place, they're 
just not even giving um, like us a chance to like fight back on them because you know they're just using those little tiny bullet holes that are very hard to see unless you you know you have like extremely good vision um, and you know about the, the bullet hole itself already. But uh, with only a minute off the rounds, the uh, the wall will already be softened up on Jacuzzi, so that is opened up, and that was very short, very fast for Lycus, so that is a saving grace for them. Uh, however, that's not where the like the focus of um, Thirsty Bastards is, as they're trying to hold on to CCDB and Cash Room, in addition to the actual main side as well. Interesting setup, um, very heavy emphasis on CCDB, and it will cost them as not exile does get a kill to side on the castle so castle is not your most vital operator but it's definitely not good to lose a player early on and luff also goes down as well to linux luff being so pivotal in the previous two rounds and going down early is extremely bad as well munch as well he what did you get the first kill of the round but he's now dead yes and i believe this is where i was talking about earlier to where the uh you know, them being a little bit too aggressive has come back and haunted them. As it's now, yes, a 3v2 as Crystal gets a kill, but it doesn't seem that uh, Lycus can flush him out of that bathroom location as Wags gets the kill, but they finally get the uh, kill off of uh, Christo into the uh, bathroom site, and now they're going to start the plant as Wax, I don't believe, is anywhere necessarily near site to stop the plant, and he doesn't see that the plant is going on. So, and it's going to be a trade at the end, Wax and Lynx, and so then they are going to take their very first attacking round. Man, that was a beautiful pistol shot. Too bad it was a trade. Like that was like, it's like the, I think that was a one tap. Like that was insane to see, but it wasn't enough. And Wax does get killed as well in the trade. Um, so that is the first three rounds done and dusted. So we're now going over to the second half of the first half, um, and it's going to be interesting to see if uh, you know if uh, Thirsty Masters are able to make basement work again, make uh, CCTV work again. Um, Wax going over to the Oryx is interesting to see. Um, it might tell us that they're going for a more roam setup uh, with you know Wax being able to jump up those hatches. They might not even actually be force all of them, uh, but we'll have to see. Yes, and so like you said, hopefully, and it's very interesting because you want those hatches to stay available for as long as you can, but I imagine he's definitely going to be more a of a roam heavier uh, presence and maybe munchies. We'll see. Maybe he'll get two picks in the first 10 seconds as he's being aggressive and just trying to get any picks. And so hopefully we'll see what happens there as they won pretty decisively on this bomb site. Yeah, we do see all three options actually get reinforced, so I, my prediction was completely off base. But it is still interesting that there is the Oryx and oh, Munches. You can't just keep doing these bullet holes. If he gets a kill off this, I'll be very upset. But it doesn't look like anybody's near him, so it looks like uh, like it is safer in this round, at least, on those bullet holes. He's going to keep well, waiting a little bit longer, but he will eventually fall off of it. Yeah, so as we see that Munchies is going to try his best to get an opening pick, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to uh, do anything at this moment as 30 seconds has already gone through. Thai is going to be very closely watching this window as he can try and get a kill. Hopefully, the hard breacher of Bridge or even Lynx and slow down this process. Yeah, and I mean, we see this, uh, we see diffusers dropped. I mean, nobody's dead, so, you know, it wasn't like dead, dropped on death, but they've dropped it outside to, in case one of them do die, so that the uh, defense doesn't realize that, you know, they don't have the diffuser. Um, but the attacker, or the defender up there, does get droned out, munches. They know where he is, and his primary strength so far has not really been gun skill, although obviously he is very skilled on the gun. It's been the, uh, his, he's just lurking behind every corner and just been, just been catching the attackers off guard. Uh, but with them knowing where he is, they might be able to shut him down much easier now. 
Uh, but there isn't really any action on him. They're just kind of holding their angles, making sure that they don't die to it early pick. But Sai does get the first kill onto Not Exile. That is the Zofia down. I'm not sure how much utility he was able to use. Bridge getting the refrag onto Wax, so that is a relatively even trade with that. Orix going down. He won't be able to get any more impact in this round. Yes, and really, and there goes Munchies getting uh, killed by Pinos. And now it seems that in a 4v3 situation, they're going to slowly start taking the thing of sight. And unfortunately, Pino stepped on the Legion mine, and Legion knew immediately where it was coming from and dies, making it 3v3. And pretty much all of the defenders are on site. There's two upstairs, so uh, Sai is going to be waiting for somebody to drop on that hatch as they need to either drop on that hatch or go downstairs and take the site from there. But I think they're going to try and get control of that armory location and uh, plant from there. And the dirt control isn't playing out, but it does get taken out as the plant is going down. Linux might be able to get this off uh, with a player holding above as well. Bridge going to be able to get the cover off, but he does kill one player. It's now a one versus one effectively as Bridge has one player left to find. But the, he is upstairs. Does Bridge know it? Maybe he does. I guess he does rotate outside. Does not. He doesn't know where he is. Uh, but Bridge is going to be holding it from outside. The diffuse, the diffuse, counter diffuse is coming in, um, and he will be sticking it, but. He, does he see it? Oh, it just goes off at the last second. Oh my gosh. Really close. So Asai, with the ears of an eagle, or I don't know, that the metaphor doesn't make sense, but he hears it. <laughs> and he is going to be trying to get the kill with the revolver now as he's out of ammo in the primary, but now too late now. There's only seven seconds left on the diffuse, and uh, Bridge, masterful play here as he's able to just bait the diffuser beautifully. Yes, and Bridge really had me worried as he decided to go way, way far outside for Sai to hear the uh, counter diffuse. And so he had me very, very worried as I didn't know if he was going to necessarily hear that Sai was going to be diffusing. So that round, I didn't necessarily see how much time was left on the counter diffuse. It couldn't have been more than a second or two. But I believe Sai could have got that uh, diffuse off. And that round would have been over. But then it was just Bridge coming back to save the day through the doorway and playing a little gunfight with Sai and having his team win the round. Yeah, the thing to remember is that as an attacker, once the diffuse is playing, you don't necessarily need to win gunfights. You just need to delay losing those gunfights long enough for the defense to not be able to uh, defuse the diffuser. So Bridge played that beautifully. You know, running outside, it was a little bit dangerous, but I'm sure they had a drone on site to watch for the diffuse to come in. Um, masterful play coming out from him. And it was a clutch as well, because it was a one versus two, and then he did get those last two kills. Or he didn't get the last kill, actually, but he got one of the last two kills in order to clean it up for him. Um, but we will see Thirsty Rassies going back downstairs. Um, as the match is now tied up two to two, uh, this is looking much better for like uh, Empire than we saw earlier in the match, but it's still early on, so we'll see if they can, you know, actually bring it around or if it's just been, you know, two rounds of luck. Yes, and uh, as you mentioned earlier, I actually forgot what you said, but I I was agreeing with you on something, but I already forgot what it was, so I'm going to move on. As we see the maestro of Christo come out now, he originally was going to play a Rooney, so that could have been a misclick. As we all know, a Rooney's not yet able to be played in this season. Uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, when the new operator drops, they can start playing her, and I'm I'm excited to see what these teams have in store to use a Rooney. So maybe he just had to very quickly six picks off, so... Might as well bring the maestro as we see, you know, your typical second floor take and like, like his empire is going to take the kitchen. It looks like they got the hatch open, but I could be wrong in that aspect. They did not get the hatch open as it was impact trick. The impact trick on kitchen is very powerful because it's very difficult to deal with unless, you know, you're using like shoot him on a pellet at a time, which is not possible. So 
that is one of the boons that uh, Habana players have now with the countering of the impact tricking, but it does look like he was trying to use four at a time so he could get impact trick there. Um, but now we see Pipino pushing downstairs, but he doesn't see the luff, but or Wax, I mean, but Wax does actually die there. Pipino taking a lot of damage, but it's definitely worth it because he does get the first kill onto Wax on the Legion. Now those few mines will not no longer generate it and won't be able to put any more down. Yes, and it seems that, uh, you know, Lycus is doing the exact same strat every single time they come, our Thirsty Bastards come to the basement. They have Pinos on those uh, red stairs, depending on what you want to call them, going down, getting the first pick or two, and then continuing from there. And like I said, they have the exact same attack as Sight. I believe he knows that somebody's out there in dirt. And that's going to be a great grenade from Scorp, as I believe an ADS called it, unfortunately. Saving uh, who's ever life that was in blue. Yeah, highly unfortunate. And um, not Exile also almost trying to, almost uh, getting the kill onto the, I think it was the Jaeger there, Munches. But Munches just hiding, just barely behind that army rack. And the nade uh, coming out, dealing a little bit of damage on Christo. But he does manage to get out of the blast radius in time. As uh, Scorp and Luff trade off kills as uh, Scorp does go down eventually. Luff getting the nice double gun to Exile as well now. And as Sai with the third. Now two versus two as Bridget evens it up. Now dropping the hatch. Diffuser or the Nitro Cell does get shot out, but it doesn't land. Bridge now alone as he is almost. Uh, I'm sorry. I missed I missed smoke there, but the attackers actually won that Legacy Empire. Managing to close it out with the penal getting the last two kills and uh, protecting the diffuser. I am not going to lie. I had no idea that uh, Pinos was still alive. I have a notepad up blocking that like final bottom left corner, and I had no idea he was still alive. So I was like, why are they not rushing Bridge to kill him right now and just go ahead and end around? But that's why. Because Pinos was still alive, and he had to crossfire. And then it was just one, two, wait for them to come this way. And that's all the, the uh, defense could do at that time. Yeah, the, uh, the fact that Pepino was still up was definitely vital in that. And he was able to you know, close it out for his team. And now up three to two, like his empire in an extremely good position. The worst they can possibly do is tie on this half, and they're on the attack. So, like I was saying earlier, three three is a good split to be on if you are the attackers, and four two even better. Yes, and hopefully three three. They definitely do not want to go a four two. I'm talking about thirsty bastards right now. They do not want to go down four two when you have the heavily sided defense on this map. So with them at 3-2, they need to win this. And I believe that they won this last time as they won the basement once and this side once. And then Lycus won, has won three in a row. So of course you're going to go back to the other one as Munchies. Looks like he's going to try and get a little spawn peak near the beginning, but He's very unsuccess and unsuccessful, but he's going to stick around and be a thorn in the side of Lycus Empire. Yeah, this uh, the play on the first floor of Raft or of Garage, I should say, as he's not actually on Raft. There's uh, there's going to be a thorn in the side of uh, Lycus Empire's foot there, um, as we see Maverick opening up this hole, opening up the uh, walls for Maverick tricking and. That will be very successful if, you know, if we can even do the same thing as before. This the nice angle from Munches, uh, with Wax actually supporting on the first floor as well, and uh, Stock could be very powerful if they don't deal with it, because that, uh, the vent does have the Nitro Cell that they could use to disrupt the plant. Yes, and now Bridge is going to get that opening kill on Christo. It looks like either he knew that the person was there, or he was just praying and praying as not Exile is going to get the kill on Wax, but it seems like Bridge is fighting uh, Laugh in construction. And so now it's a 5v3 situation. The attackers he heavily favored right now. And Laugh's going to be droned out into construction area as Munchies 
is going to be taking some damage, and he's not necessarily understanding that Pinos is right beside him. Obviously, we can see everything, but he cannot see what we see. Yeah, now 4v2 West Bridge gets another kill right after Munch gets as much as gets a kill. And Munch is with a double kill now. We're bringing it up to two to three, so he is still in this. And Scorp and Bridge are both on very low health right now, so Linux is the only player at full capacity for uh, the attack. But Bridge taking a fight that's dangerous. He'll die to any shot from any gun right now. Um, but, you know, Left does fall back off of that, and he is going to be trying to hold on to site as best he can. 50 seconds left. They're going to be holding on for a lot while as they do get thrown out as well. And uh, Bridge does manage to get into uh, construction, but those Gumas will wreak havoc on him as he takes damage every like t every second he, he doesn't pull the goo out. The plant does actually doesn't go down as the attackers get up with a flurry of kills and oh, up with a double kill. Beautiful shots coming up from him. Yes, and surprisingly that the plant didn't go down, but doesn't matter as the attackers take the round anyway. Um, and really, they had the prime time to win that round the whole time. You know, it was a very early 5v3, um, and then it became a 4-3v3, and so on and so forth until all the uh, defenders died. But it was all like a show. As we said earlier, Lycus is now up 4-2 going into the half. What does Thirsty Bastards... What do they need to change to bring this back? Well, I think they were relying a lot, like way too much on their um, janky kind of plays, you know, for munches with those single bullet holes in the barricades and uh, stuff like that. I think they need to play a lot more structured if they want to take this, um, you know, play more, I don't want to say passively because they're on the, on the attack is they're now they're going to need to take the initiative, but play a lot more constrained, not go for every single gun that you can, just because you can. Um, and I hope that we can see them use that, because if not, then this might be a very quick 7-3, seven, 7-2. Seven, uh, seven, um, but yeah, with Lycus not going to the defense, they're going to be in the prime position to take this map uh, by, the, by Storm. Yeah, and the way Lycus is playing, they're slowly outgunning Thirsty Bastards in the beginning. Thirsty Bastards were winning their gunfight over Lycus, and it seemed that they were the better at the gunfights, but now it is completely turned around, making it this 4-2, unfortunately, for Thirsty Bastards. So, I'm going to add on a little bit. Thirsty Bastards needs to win their gunfights. They need to, like you said, just kind of play that more passive roll right now but it's hard to do that when you're on tech when you need to make it towards site very quickly and just kill as many people as you can so you can take site so i hope thirsty bastards will be able to do what they need to do if not it's going to go downhill and like this will take this victory so we'll see yeah the impact the mavericks are coming out from munches uh very efficient here let's get the first well the bottom half but Interesting they didn't go for the top half first because it's a lot safer to do so the top half first rather than the bottom half. But you know, I'm I'm not the player here, so who knows? He does get to do it anyways, and it does seem to work out. So I can't really blame him for that. Uh, but Sophia is going to be in position to open that up real quick. Um, they didn't do the pre-opening with the sledge uh, as um, like as Empire did, which is interesting. I mean, they don't have a sledge, so I guess they couldn't have done so, but. You know, they could have used the Ash or the Sophia out of time, but that's neither here nor there as the ball does get opened up and its first floor is now going to be contested by Luff as they're going to be attempting to clear out these roamers on the first floor and the second floor aside pushes it into Jacuzzi and takes down Papino very early on with just over, just under half the round to go and so a five versus four and Wax is pushing it to sight and he does get the kill onto Shaw or to one of the players on Mumbai, but then gets shut down by Linux as he's able to uh, get the refrag. Now in a three versus four, uh, my, uh, Lycus Empire is going to need to hunker down onto site in order to take this. Yes, and I will say that Lycus has more of the easier way to do this because there is two, never mind, one Nitro Cell on board 
for Lycus and now it's 1v4 as Lav gets the kill on bridge. Lav's going to attempt the uh, diffuser, but it seems that not Nitro Cell is actually going to be on point as now they still have 20 seconds to try and plant the diffuser, but Munchies is going to get the kill as the case is rotating back up to site and Thirsty Bastards will be taking that round win. A nice attempt from Nugzal, but just a little bit too little too late. Uh, like it's just not able to deal with the aggression, the pure aggression from uh, Thirsty Bastards. I mean, like one second they're they're like outside, then the next they're right up and next to site and construction. That was extremely fast, extremely precise play coming out from Thirsty Bastards. And we do see the warning coming out from Lycus, so that tells me that they were a little bit worried about the flashbangs and the smoke grenades coming out uh, from uh, Thirsty Bastards, which is a little bit warranted, I want to say. Yes, and like you said, one minute they were outside, but I believe it was the ash of somebody wax. He just kind of, once he got that first pick onto uh, in bedroom, he just kind of walked into the site. Nobody was really watching construction, and he got to kill into cash, and then somebody was right behind him to get the refrag uh, potential, and so I'm not sure why as soon as somebody called, hey, I died in bedroom, they're going to be coming, somebody's going to be coming from construction. Somebody didn't try and rotate over to construction from to stop that from happening because the Maverick was also in construction, destroying that wall as much as possible to make it soft so that they could have a bigger hole to watch. Yeah, for sure. The the fact that Lycus didn't really adapt their strategy after the that first pick onto the person inside of bedroom, uh, that was very worrying. And if they can't really fix that, then we might see Thirsty Bastards actually come back here. Yeah, and so it doesn't seem that Lycus is being necessarily as aggressive as uh, Thirsty Bastard works on their defense. And correct me if I'm wrong, is this the first time we have seen a smoke beam play on this map so far? It might be, yeah. Like, yeah, I haven't really noticed it before, but yeah, the lack of smoke for, more, for both teams so far has been really interesting. Uh, side though, getting the kill into Pepino. That Jaeger not going to be much doing much impact uh, this round, at least in terms of gunplay. He might still, you know, have to find some post mortem use in his ADSs, but. In terms of that 16, 416 Garbine, they will not be used anymore. Uh, Maverick, Mavericking into the Dirt Tunnel, but there is a shield and an ADS there, so it does appear that uh, like his Empire were anticipating this, as they will be in position to deny the push in from there. Yes, and, you know, with the early pick onto the Jaeger, you know, you're not, uh, I believe you said, you're not really missing much. He already has... Okay, Munch is going to team kill and take himself out as well. So I don't know if he just missed through the grenade there or he held it for a little bit too long. It seems that it was obviously accident as I believe he was trying to come down dirt and get the kill there. So that's very, very unfortunate for Thirsty Bastards as they needed this round to make it a 4-4. And now Bridge is going to be trying to hold off the people up top, uh, up in Kitchen. So we'll see if he's able to do that now. Yeah, Side though does manage to get a nice triple kill as like he gets two more kills and he's in sight now. Might be single-handedly bring this out. He's going for the ace, but he does not manage to get a Bridge. Gonna deny that as he's now one of one versus two as he needs to get the last few players on yeah, Thirsty Bastards to win this. He doesn't realize that nobody's in dirt and Luff manages to come up behind him and take him out uh, from behind, I believe. Yes, he came from blue and just took him out as the Wamai of Bridge was just looking the wrong way at the wrong time. And from what seemed pretty obvious that Thirsty Bastards, I don't want to say that they could have lost it, but they definitely should not have won that round. And it was all thanks to the jackal of Psy. He got a quad kill, you know, just waltzing into Psy eventually and just taking out everybody. Yes, Jackal's ability is that he can see the footprints of the defenders, but that should not have stopped them from communicating 
or maybe he was just fast enough to where he was all over the map and they had no idea of where he was at any given moment. So I'm not sure how he was able to do it, but he was just winning his gunfights and now they're going to re-attempt this basement location. I feel like I had just single in, like putting his team on his back right there and uh, carrying them to victory, especially with Munches attempting to sabotage them with that accidental team kill with the grenade there. Um, that was very unfortunate. If I had to guess, I'd say that he probably was trying to nade into dirt to clear out the uh, ADS or shield or whatever, and it just bounced wrong on like a piece of the terrain there on the wall, and it just kind of bounced back into their faces, which is very unfortunate, but. You know, stuff happens, and you know you kind of have to deal with that. And uh, Sai definitely did deal with that perfectly fine. Yes, and you know that's why you don't try and group up a little bit um, when your teammates cooking a grenade. But you know you also never expect your teammate to miss throw a grenade as well. So Bridge is going to be playing the one mile as again. And throwing those discs a little bit, in my opinion, a little bit too close because that first explosion might could destroy the second one. As I'm looking, uh, we just saw a very quick replay. It doesn't look like it would be uh, close enough, but we have Scorp playing as the smoke in dirt to try and stop anybody from coming down that way. And if nobody ends up coming that way, he'll be able to rotate and help out his teammates. And the armory location. Definitely a lot of utility into uh, holding on to dirt this time. Uh, well, like last time as well. And uh, in the meantime, Waff and Munches, and Waff, they've all been able to uh, push into the building very easily without much contestion. But we'll have to see if they can actually like convert that into a site execute. And this is a very nice angle. I'd love to see this coming out uh, from the defense here. Like it's, like it's Empire just holding onto these very tight angles, very dirty angles, and if anybody comes on those main stairs, they will get completely destroyed by that angle, I feel. Yes, and I agree. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I agree, as they're going to try and get this hatch open, which is not necessarily a hatch that you see op try and open too much. Most people try and get the armory hatch open. Um, yeah, you won't bar hatch open as you can just drop down if nobody's watching that area, but I'm going to assume that Lycus knows that they need to watch this area and they don't give up side control pretty easily. But Munchies, he's going to be giving out the ping saying, hey, somebody's at bar, we need to take them out. And Wax, we're playing the IQ, and knows that there's also somebody there and looks like he's going to try and contest it as much as possible. If Bridge is not careful, he will lose his head. And Lynx is going to be the first one to go as Slav gets the first kill, making it 4v5, and that narrowed it back down to a 4v4. That does go start to go down, but the Exile getting a knife down to the two players. That is going to deny the plant there, and now Exile for the quad kill. And now he's going for the ace, as it's all up to Sai. He's going to need to go for the... Uh, 4k, but he doesn't actually get it, and Pepino is going to deny the ace uh, from, from his own teammate, but it doesn't matter because he wins the round for Lycus Empire. Now up, uh, I think, 5 to 4, 5 to 3, or 4 to 3, uh, something like that. Lycus now again in the lead, 5 to 4, yes. And it just seems that whoever teams gets the quad kills, they're going to win the round pretty much. Um, you know, it was the all, I forgot who actually got the quad kill. I believe it was uh, non exile was getting the kills as Cade. You know, he got the two kills with the natural cell there to deny the plant from going down. And that ultimately won them the round right there. And so, uh, like this, with winning that round, they're going to go to Jim Bedroom. And they're going to bring out the mirror. And I imagine she's going to be setting up in that bathroom location with the mirror so that they can deny whoever goes on jacuzzi and they're going to electric haul that wall as well to make it just a little bit tougher for the attackers no i mean the fact that maverick on the board means that electricity won't really do much but it will potentially you know get a little a couple ticks of damage onto the maverick as he's tricking it or you know maybe a, a careless drone or something but 
for the most part, that electricity is just going to be a little bit of a deterrent rather than something to actually stop the attackers from opening up that wall. Um, and we will see, you know, not exactly surprising to have the triad, but a little bit ineffectual, perhaps. Yes, and so it seems that Nox, not Exile is going to go actually underneath with the electric hall to electrify, uh, look like the bathroom wall. So that mirror is now going to be electrified instead of maybe mute jammed or something like that. Um, and so that's a very interesting tactic as now, <coughs> excuse me again, if they don't know that the electric hall is underneath, they're going to have almost no way of opening that bathroom wall with their Habana. And it seems that Scorp is going to unfortunately lose a gunfight down in the basement area as he was trying to get uh, some roam game happening with the Malusi. And unfortunately, he just lost his gunfight and he's going to be taking out early, making it a early for V5. Yeah, the fact that Sai and um, Wax were both down there to like, clear out the Malusi, I think is very nice. Uh, you know, they have the very coordinated roam clear there, you know, one pushing from blue, the other pushing from dirt. I love to see it. And it does mean that it's going to be much harder for, uh, I guess, to open up and win this round and bring us to match point. Uh, but we do see the Maverick trick going off successfully. No surprise there. You know, we've seen it a thousand times at this point, but it is still worth noting how uh, precise it actually is to do. Because... There's a lot of angles you can get on, on the Maverick there, and in order to avoid that, you do need to be very precise with your blow torching. Um, but in the meantime, we also have Bridge here holding on to the uh, C or on to Cash as he's going to be trying to hold on to this as long as possible in order to stop the attackers from pushing in. And you will get a uh, Bridge will actually get a kill onto Wax, so uh, with a shotgun. So yeah, like he's like I said, he's holding on to that very nicely. And no, Munches, you can't. Munch missing your days like that that is not ideal um yeah maybe go off of the maybe go off the nades if you're going to do that but pepino and nun exile also getting a nice kill so now it's all to side he's going to need to get a 4k or actually yeah 4k in order to win this round yes and with him triggering that malusi device they're going to hear get destroyed right there and he somehow gets a kill on to uh Pino's and making it a 3v1. We've seen him get a claw kill before, but Bridge making it a double kill. Sai is going to get a double kill, but they know that he's on these stairs and he doesn't necessarily know where the other people are. And unfortunately, Sai didn't know Cade was where he was in exile, getting the kill, winning the round for Lycus, going in to match point. Yeah, a little bit closer than is comfortable, but still ultimately well within bounds of winning it. Um, yeah, Munch is Bridge kind of tell, talking to Munch to tell him he, he should probably get off the nades because he's just been kind of killing himself and his teammates with them. Um, and he, he will actually get off of the nades, he'll go down to the Havana instead. Maybe he can find some impact there, uh, without the nades interfering with him getting kills. Yes, and so match point Thirsty Bastards down by two. They won two straight, and then Lycus won two straight in the last four rounds. So, with uh, Lycus going to uh, probably the secondary bomb site that most people go to, it's kind of goes hand in hand with the church armory hold. Um, so, Cash and CCTV, Lycus is going there for their possibly last defense. What do you? want to see Thirsty Bastards do to try and force another match point, make it 6-5, and then hopefully win that one and make it and take us to overtime. Well, last round we saw kind of a pseudo rash coming out, like particularly from the Ash, um, and he was able to kind of just push into sight without much contestion. I don't think that'll work again, so I do think that they need to kind of be a lot more methodical this time. However, obviously... With the rush like that, anything can happen, and it is always possible for it to work, however unlikely. Uh, but I do think that if Thirsty Bastards wants to give themselves the best chance possible at winning this, they're going to need to be a lot more, con like a lot more um, 
conservative in their push and not kind of rush in and die early on. Uh, you do see Bridge here uh, downstairs again. Now, I mean, it wasn't him last time, but he will actually work it back up. So it is going to be attempting to hold on to the lounge itself here, trying to stop the plant on the default site, on the default spot on B, as he's going to open up a hole there. But it doesn't matter because Sai is going to be opening up the logistics hatch, and it does look to be a construction push. Yes, um, it very much looks like to be a construction push. And what's kind of interested in me is that Bridge still has a proximity alarm uh, still in his pocket. Never mind. As I decided to call him out on it, he gets rid of it. So he now has two proximity alarms down. And so he can hear the uh, alarms and see where his enemies are coming from. And so it's slowly but surely going to be a pull push. As it didn't look like for a little bit, they had anybody to open up that CCTV softwall. And now Sophia is going to get rid of one of her impacts and open up that wall. The defense still has, as always, the upper hand right here. As a minute and a half has happened and no kills have happened on the board yet. Uh, no kills is good news. Well, no news is good news in terms of when you're defending. Um... Because if you can push the rounds to be like, you know, five versus five still in the last 20 seconds, you're in very good position to win it out. Um, and just over a minute now, and there's still been very little actual like contact between the two uh, teams. And that is definitely something to, uh, you know, point to in favor of the uh, defense here. As like, is, is just holding on to say as best they can. It does look like a potential uh, impact trick. I'm not sure if it's successful or not, but. Not is all being put onto very low health in the meantime, as Luff actually gets the kill to Scorp as well, and then another onto uh, the and onto Noxile as uh, Luff just kind of tearing through sight, double kill now, and they have sight control. Plant is going to go down very shortly as another player tries to rotate up to red, but they oh, didn't no. actually get the kill. That is beautiful with the ump as well. Bridge, beautiful shots from the Christo, but Diffuser does go down and is now all up to the two players inside of red. Got a yeah. on the person in, on the balcony, does get the kill. Pepino getting the kill onto Luff. And now he's going to go for another onto the person on server rack. Now this is a tag team. And now a two versus two. Oh, but the drop shot going to win it out for Munches. He's the last two kills with the bearing nine. Yes, and they, again, started to very much worry me as the fuser went down. Uh, the two remaining defenders were on red stairs and slowly rotating up. And they knew that they were coming from red stairs. And it was just, unfortunately, nobody was winning their gunfights on the attackers until the very end. Um, and so with Munch getting the double kill there with Habana, that really saved the round because if he would have died, one of them would have diffused as the other one would have held the, ang the angle. And so Thirsty Bastards narrowly, in my opinion, winning that round, still for still match point for Lycus. As Lycus, I didn't see what site they're going to, but we'll see in one second. I believe they went back to the... Oh, they went back down to basement as... Interesting. I'm, actually, I, I say they went back down to basement. I believe they've only gone here once, May. Once, maybe. Uh, I know they've been here once at least. They might have been here twice. I'm not entirely sure. I wasn't, I mean, obviously I'm paying attention, but you know, I'm not really counting each individual site out, but I do know they've won it at least once. Um, so it is not necessarily surprising to see them go here. Uh, and I, I do think that the CCTV hold, I think it just wasn't working for them because uh, it seems that uh, Thirsty Bastards were just able to kind of push through and ignore most of the defense um, without engaging much with it. They're kind of just able to go like either over or under, depending on what metaphor you decide to use, the defense of uh, Lycus Empire. So they're just going to kind of ignore and refuse to go back to CCB and take on uh, Basin again. Yes, and hopefully Thirsty Bastards, I would love for this to go into overtime match point. Uh, but it seems that Lycus will pretty much try and do as much plant denial as they can or just for the forward progression for Thirsty Bastards as they bring in the Goyo and he's been going to be playing 
in the uh, church, I'm sorry, uh, location. And so whenever he starts to get fleshed out, just pop the Goyo shield and the attackers are going to either run through the fire, which nobody wants to do, or they are going to have to wait for the fire to die down. So in a way, that is a plant denial, or like I said, a forward progression denial uh, on their own. Uh, and Munches is using two Havana pellets on the floor beside the, the the hatch there. I'm not sure if that's actually going to work. It I... does appear to have worked. That is, I've never actually seen that before. That's very interesting to see that you can actually do that to get rid of the K charge, and then he's going to use his... Uh, you know, charges on the hatch itself now to open it up. So that is definitely something you don't see every day. Very beautiful play coming out from him. Uh, much better than on the knees, at least. Yeah, and unfortunately, Bridge is going to try and to, uh, take out who's ever on the second floor, but he's going to be jack jackal track pretty much that whole gunfight. And so, but with him having a dis disadvantage, he still takes out Sai, making it 5v4. So, as I says, nice shot. And so Thirsty Bastards has an uphill battle to do as Bridge is going to be taking some damage. Minute left, Thirsty thirsty Bastards, they have to do something as Bridge gets a double kill and Laugh will make get a kill and Thirsty Bastards will even it and now take the advantage 2v3 as they now have control over this whole situation. But Scorp, big kill from Scorp as he gets a headshot onto Wax, making 2v2. The diffuser is down in sight. So the attacker's going to have to either go for kills or get all to get the diffuser and the plant's going to try and go down as Crystal gets the diffuser and the plant is going to go down and Exile is actually going to die as Thirsty Bastards takes around, forcing overtime. Yeah, very close round there coming out. Both teams looking very precarious in different uh, multiple times in that round. Uh, bring it over to overtime now, six to six, and like us, will be going on the defense first. So they do have that a, a disadvantage, I guess, because they only won two of their defensive rounds. Um, you know, each each team winning four attacking rounds of this of the six. So that is something to keep in mind that we have seen a an attacker sided uh, clubhouse rather than defender sided. Yeah, and apparently. Uh... Clubhouse became an attacker-sided map overnight, and it's very interesting as... Uh, actually, it's not interesting, because uh, Lycus has won. This was one of their only uh, round wins. They're going to go to the gym bedroom bomb site, which you don't really see. But, like I said, they won this site, so they're going to try and win it again to have the upper hand and go in to the attacking round. Uh, the the fact that they're going here doesn't really surprise me. Um, you know, you go with what works, and this say obviously worked for them either because they have a particularly good hold on it, or because um, you, uh, thirsty bastards just didn't have a good grasp on how to attack it. We'll have to see if they can amend that for this round. Um, but you know, it's it's tough to like you know make a new attacking strategy on the fly like that so it might be difficult to, for them to adapt to this uh score going to go to the basement again he's going to be trying to hold on to this like he was last time last time it did not work out for him although his team did end up still winning the rounds in the end but definitely no thanks to score himself yes and hopefully score will be able to last a little bit longer this time on that basement side but i don't believe anybody's really going to go towards that basement location and so now he's rotated all the way up to cctv and cash to try and help the mute player of i believe it is bridge uh in the cash area so it's going to be playing some support as bridge is just waiting he knows somebody's coming from cctv and score oh no he's going to get taken out by laugh making it a 4v5 but Laugh still has to deal with the mute in the uh, cash area, and he's decided that's not what I'm wanting to do. I'm going to rotate and join my other teammates. So if Bridge doesn't get the call that you know nobody's coming from CCTV anymore, he's going to have to try and rotate into bedroom and help out his teammates or later in the round. 
Yeah, the uh, I find it kind of comical how he just kind of noped right out of there, right out of the window. Um, yeah. You know, different player coming in into CC right now, and it is Sai. He's gonna you know catch out one player, the mute inside of construction or inside of um, cash, I should say. While there is also another player in construction, they might not know that though. As Wax is gonna join him, Exile getting the kill into Luff, so that is now evening it out into four versus four. As he gets the beautiful headshot onto the player. Uh, has been very impactful. 18 kills so far, 2.0 KG. Um, but this uh, C4 through the open mirror window is not going to find anybody. Uh, does not even any damage, I don't think. Exile getting another kill, and Linux as well onto Christo. Now in a 2 versus 3, uh, you know, uh, Thirsty Bastard suddenly on the back foot. Yes, and uh, Sai is going to try and get the person that's flesh out and he's going to be killed from that open window in cctv i believe and bridge is going to get the kill Sai was not expecting anybody to rotate into that cctv and get greedy so now 3v1 thirsty bastards uh munch was going to have to drop to try and get it but exile was waiting for him and so like us winning again on the one of the only bomb sites that they won as Thirsty Bastards now down 7 6 going into overtime match point. So I would expect, I uh, believe they only won Church and I don't want to say CCTV, but I believe Church was more decisive in their win. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you can see there the consequences of not actually fully taking over uh, Cash and CCTV as an attacker because. If you don't, the defense is able to just rotate into CC and kill anybody that's on the window there or that's on the balcony there looking into uh, bedroom or gym. Yes, and so um, there was a little bit of a tease of a vigil, but Lav is going to uh, six pick off that and go into the mute. So I expect a pretty typical... Uh, set up from the defenders as it looks like Lycus, uh Empire, they have the exact same setup, I believe, that they did when they were on attacking rounds. So, Thirsty Bastards, my obviously they can hear me. They are going to have to try and not uh, be greedy in their, uh, in their roles. They need to play this passive three minutes yes munch munchies he could get a kill and try and be a little bit as aggressive but it doesn't look like he's going to be doing that as they're still getting this set up and munchies was still on site so i really yeah. want to see them play passive yeah i do like the passive play but it is worth noting that the only two rounds that they did not actually end up winning on the uh defense was when munchies went for those bullet hole spawn beaks so if he's not able to get an early impact like that, well, like he just did on Silo going down to about half health, um, they might not be able to win this. But he does actually get half health onto Exile. That's not quite a kill, but it is, you know, half a kill, and that's worth something at least. But oh no, beautiful shot coming out from Exile, um, just doming and munchies. But Wax does get the kill onto Pepino, so that is evening it out, and the HP advantage is now technically in favor of Thirsty Bastards. Yes, and uh, like you said, HP for Thirsty Bastards. It doesn't look like that C4 got out where it needed to be as uh, Scorp is going to get the kill on lap as he tried to rotate away into Red Stairs. So, 4v3 for Thirsty Bastards. We'll see how they are able to play off as I believe somebody is still playing on that Red Stairs location. And so the wall's open. They are going to rotate side. Still on, on the catwalk to tr try and deny anybody going into that garage. But it looks like he's going to be peeking his head a little bit too much. But nobody's going to punish him for that. Yeah, Wax being downstairs right now is a little bit of a handicap, I think, because it, it effectively means it's two versus four. As Wax is not really doing anything right now. He might be able to get a pick uh, in logistics, but... As of right now, he's not really helping to, you know, hold on to sight at all as he's leaving it up to Christo and Psy, but Psy does get taken down and is now only Christo and Psy with Wax being in the periphery, but he does actually get a kill on the bridge and he has one thing back to sight, so I may have spoken, spoken too soon, um, but it's still definitely in favor of uh, Lana, or Lycus Esports, or Empire, and 
They were pushing into Rafters. They have they have the control of Rafters now that um, Exile is dead, or sorry that um, Psy is dead, and it's uh, going to be up to the two remaining players of uh, Thirsty Bastards to try to bring this to a uh, final round. Yes, and Chris is going to be watching Red Stairs, as I believe that Wax is going to be watching into Cash. They knew the they know the push is coming from Garage, but I hope Christo's not going to try and get down. Uh, into garage area as the plant is going to go down that C4 may unfortunately not do anything as the diffuser is down. The defenders need to try and flush out these attackers. Um, I'm not necessarily sure that they know that they're in garage but I have a strong inkling that they do know. So it seems that Lycus is just going to be watching their angles as Thirsty Bastards goes down another player but Wax with the triple kill, making it 2v1. But Wax could not do anything against the two uh, Empire uh, players as they just held their angles, watch. And so Thirsty Bastards unfortunately lose the first map. Now, like his Empire showing us some very strong attacking there from that last round in particular. Um, you know, just holding the angles they needed to and stopping Thirsty Bastards from making those hero plays that they've been able to do throughout most of the match, uh, kind of just shutting down the players they needed to and quarantining off the players that they couldn't just shut down immediately. You know, Wax, he was off-site, like way off-site for most of the match, but it didn't really do much until, you know, the very end when he was able to get that triple kill, but it was a little bit too little too late there. Yes, and uh, so he was far off-site, but he did get kills. But unfortunately, like you said, it was a little bit, a little bit too late. Um, as like it takes the first round, and or the, not the first round. I'm sorry, the first map. And so we are going to the second map, which I believe was Villa. And I'm very interesting uh, to see how that goes as the next match. Yeah, uh, and I won't unfortunately be around to see the next match, but if it's anything like the match you just saw, I'm sure it'll be uh, very, very interesting to see. Uh, but yeah, you guys will be seeing Villa uh, coming up next shortly. Uh, once we're able to, you know, switch out the casters, you know, dual rope, I'm pretty sure you're staying, uh, correct? I actually am not. Um, I am going to be giving the uh, mic over as well as I believe that since the majority of chat is French, we're going to be uh, changing casters to French. Um, Hans, if you can actually put in their name so I can say who's coming in, see if anybody in chat knows who they are. Uh, Peeps and the casters. Uh, they are in chat. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Peeps and Hypers are going to be the uh, casters coming in, replacing me and vulgar so vulgar your last and final thoughts for tonight uh, well i think that if like is able to play like they did in that last round for the remainder of the second map i do think that they will win it decisively uh but thirsty pastor is definitely not out of it they can still win it and i hope to see a third or i hope that there is a third map to watch um you know i'll be cheering on from the sidelines um but yeah other than that i just I hope that it's the second map is as, exhil as exhilarating as the first. Yes, and I agree on that one. Uh, Lycus and Thirsty Bastards, they are some of my two favorite teams to play or to watch play because they just show good siege all the time. And the fact that they're playing against each other, that the first map went into uh, overtime match point, was very big for both teams and so as you said if the first map is indicate indication of what's to come the rest of the people in chat they have a long night ahead of them as so does the players and so um we are soon going to be hold handing over the mics um i don't have any other final words so um, if you don't have any other final words as well, Vulgar, I hope everybody has a good night.
Bonjour tout le monde, on se retrouve, moi Hypers, euh, duo de caster récent, euh, la game devrait <rire> commencer, <rire> pas très long, euh, on attend que les deux équipes soient prêtes. Ouais, effectivement, Et, euh... deux équipes euh, assez talentueuses, j'ai bien hâte de voir qui va gagner Villa. Pareil, on a vu une grosse performance ici de la part des deux équipes, on espère un score qui rebondit, première game de camp. Euh... On s'attend à des belles choses de sa part. Je veux voir la même chose du côté de Kristawa. La première game, c'était assez, euh, comment dire, euh, pas fameux. Je veux un rebondissement. Puis euh, c'est ça. Je pense que tu peux start. Donc, euh, pas la partie commence. Deuxième map, Villa, comme on l'a dit. Qu'est-ce que t'en penses, Pips, là, toi, des, des deux équipes en ce moment qui jouent contre, là? Qui tu penses qu'il va gagner euh, vie, là? J'espère euh, un match assez serré, encore une fois. Euh, Malheureusement, je pense qu'on va, qu va avoir euh, un Rios. On a demandé défense côté de la Kiss Empire. Donc, ça risque d'être un Rios. Euh, la Kiss Empire qui avait demandé la défense. Un petit... Euh, chance de répéter ce que j'ai dit. <rire> Non, arrête. <rire> Donc, euh... Pendant, tu, euh... tu vas faire pendant Rios? <rire> ah, il fait ah, confirm, ah, tu confirm to menu. To menu. Sir. Là, il va falloir que tu recrées une game. T'es réinvite. Je suis tellement smart. Build different, on m'a dit. Create online. Il nous entend-tu? Fait abandon match. Non, Et... ouais. Ouais. Salut, guys. <rire> euh, J'imagine que c'est ça. Ouais. As, a, as a spectator, on va dire as a player. Ok, fait que là faut juste que tu réinvites. Fait que je sais pas si c'était ça là, c'est genre. Euh... Mettons à invite bridge. Ouais. Le quatrième, ouais. ouais lui, lui qui a une photo bleue à l'aide à l'aide, ouais. ouais. ça. Puis l'autre c'est peu importe, écrit genre cri... euh, pas crypto mais. Euh. Il y a qui d'autre? Christawa. <rire> euh... <rire> ouais, écrit CR. CH. Ah, c'est H, je me bats. Ouais, le premier. C'est lui avec le nom, je vois. Sûr. Sure. Puis au pire, invite euh, aussi euh, Munchies, écrit M-U. Ah, M-U. Il l'a ah, plus. Il l'a plus. Elle l'a pas. Ah, c'est fine. Les deux sont là. Show be good. Ouais. Fait que là, faut que tu mettes euh, la L-Y. Ok. Le stand même. Puis demande. J'imagine que c'est. Euh... On va écrire Blue Team, mettons, euh, je sais pas, TBG. Ouais. Qui est TBG? Puis euh, Orange Team écrit. Euh... Ouais. Parfait. Euh... <rire> après. Euh, demandes... Villa. Ma Villa. Ouais, Villa. Puis après, demande à TBG quel. Euh... Quel side ils veulent en OT? Je peux juste leur demander dans le chat. Ils disent TBG, side OT. Point d'interrogation. Euh, OT. Genre OT. Juste un OP. Point d'interrogation. Ok, fait que là, va dans option encore. Là, descend. Euh, first team attacking during overtime, mais ça orange. Ah, parfait, man. C'est bon, c'est comme ça. Euh, ouais, c'est ouais, parfait. Ok, fait que là, tu leur demandes. Là, tu demandes fais S. Demandes non, ils ont, ils ont déjà fait R, tu fais S. Ok, okay fais juste S. Fuck bon. ces gars-là. Après, euh, quelques problèmes 
Euh, technique. Technique, on va dire. On est de retour. On s'attend à une grosse partie, euh, spécialement de Scorp. On, on veut voir une, une belle performance de notre euh, streamer québécois. <rire> Et euh, récemment, nouveau joueur compétitif de Rainbow Six. Donc c'est parti. TBG à l'attaque, Likus Empire à la défense. Qu'est-ce qu'on va voir comme ban du côté de la TBG? William, pronostic? Euh, probablement un Thatcher ban assez basique. Euh, tout le monde ban ça ces temps-ci. Tout le monde ne sait pas comment jouer sans ou avec. Eh bien, c'est ça, je Et pensais, voilà. Thatcher ban. Quel analyste. <rire> Écoute, hors pair. Du côté de la Likus. On va sûrement y aller pour un Ibana Ace, j'imagine. Non, 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 c'est good, c'est good. Non, non c'est good. Un Ibana Ace, un Ace Band. Un Blackbeard. What? <rire> Quelque chose que je m'attendais pas. On va voir que. J'imagine que Munchies est euh, le principal visé dans cette situation. <rire> Étant donné que Prizer a de l'Intel sur euh, l'équipe adverse. Deuxième ban. Ban défensif pour la Likus. Qu'est-ce qu'on va prendre Probablement. J'en ai aucune idée. Un Kade Kade. ban, un assez bon ban dans cette map-là, avec les nouveaux Kade tricks qu'on peut faire pour Vol, pour le Triple Wall, toutes ces choses-là. Très surprenant. Par contre, sachant que <rire> Exil est un main Kade. Effectivement. Genre avec très, toi. Genre Parce très... que tu drops un donut. Euh, non. Ah, ok. <rire> Dernier ban. Sûrement de Mira. Wow. Eh ben oui, assez basic. Ah. Et que je suis 2 ah. en 2, c'est ce que je veux dire. 0 en 2 pour ma part. Assez malaisant. Donc c'est parti. La deuxième map qui commence entre la euh, TBG et Lucas Empire. Où, Les gars de la Capitaine qui vont qui commencer, dans le chat. Euh, William. Ça, on va sûrement y aller pour assez basic, Aviator ouais. Game Room. J'imagine qu'on va voir des setups bas. vraiment, vraiment assez, <rire> assez basic de la part des deux équipes. Je pense que. On fait pas beaucoup de dry run du côté des deux équipes. J'ai entendu dire qu'il y en avait une qui était pick-up squad, fait que ça risque d'être vraiment basic. J'ai hâte de voir, ça va sûrement re relier aux gun skills. J'ai hâte de voir quelle équipe va l'emporter côté gun skills. Bien vu. Euh, un 6 picking pour Jackal du côté de Laf. On sait que Laf a été très solide sur son Jackal, dernière map. On, on sait pourquoi il prend, tu veux dire. Jackal, très bon pick dans ce map-là. Une grande map. Je peux jouer à peu près partout. Je peux aller dans le basement. Je vais track le thé dans la merde, comme on dit. Fait que... <rire> Jackal, très bon. Donc c'est parti. Scorp, voir s'il est le shotgun. On le sait que... Ça, c'est un toit. Scorp. Ouais. <rire> wow. <rire> Scorp, on sait qu'il est très bon sur la LA. Gros joueur LA. Donc, ce euh, sera le fun de voir euh, comment il va le gérer. Comme vous dit. Donc, première défense, Aviator. Games, comme on a dit. Euh... Les défenseurs qui font leur setup. <rire> on a l'air de vouloir faire un, un old côté study avec la LR justement. On va peut-être essayer de jouer probablement sur la hatch. Peut-être même dans les reds, je suis pas trop sûr encore. Mais ça a l'air de vouloir faire assez basic avec le top main. On fait le rotate euh, basic books. Et euh, c'est ça. On a Scorp qui est parti dans le basement. On va tenter bon, un one tap. Le one tap. On le connaît. On le connaît. Tout le monde le connaît. Est-ce que ça va réussir par contre Et non. Ça va être assez greedy pour le euh, premier round, mais bon, il essaie de qui, va... qui semble s'en aller vers un master take, les drones qui ont été envoyés, le côté astronomie qui a été droné, l'insertion du côté des attaquants. Wax qui présentement watch le flank du côté astro, dépend plutôt rapide du côté des attaquants qui sont déjà in du côté de master. Ouais, on voit, c'est bien que Scorp va retêter son shield maintenant. On a l'information que ça push Master Side, donc on va tout retêter nos ADS shield pour un Master Push dans le fond. Et euh. C'est ok. Pour l'instant, on est encore dans la phase de droning qui est plutôt lente au début. Mais c'est là que ça commence. On a la fille. Laf, je l'appeler la fille. Laf qui est déjà insertionnée. Eh! Insertionnée. Ça se dit quoi? Bon game de la part de, de Linux, gros shot sur, euh, sur le jackal, bien joué de sa part, on va partir dans la situation de 4v5 attaque, c'est quelque chose d'assez difficile à faire, surtout dans la villa, on va essayer de s'insérer à la même place de, que... Bro. Laf, laf. Laf. Okay. merci. Donc on, on va avoir le contrôle de study du côté de, de Scorp, on va avoir quelqu'un sur le balcony, ça va peut-être falloir prendre un gunfight pour euh, le déloger de là. 
Il y a bien joué de la part d'Avocaja qui était pas là last game, je pense ouais. que quelqu'un le savait. Il vient d'arriver de nulle part. Il est spawn in, comme on dit. Toujours Bridge dans Study, on va faire une très, un très bel job de sa part. On va essayer de rouler le plus longtemps possible, dénayer le plus de temps possible. Toujours un 5v3 des défenseurs. On a juste à jouer les crossfires ici, puis on aurait gagné le round assez facilement. Mais est-ce qu'on va y aller assez grady, il va piquer le 90. Finalement, Chris va décider de retêter, il va aller jouer le landing. On va probablement tenter pour un plan bientôt du côté de Vol. En 5v3, ça va être un peu compliqué par contre. Effectivement, on a encore beaucoup de C4. De, de, on n'a pas de smoke, mais on a encore deux C4 pour smoke. le plan. On a oui, il y a un smoke. Il y a trois smokes, deux C4, t'as raison. On a toujours euh, son nom qui est sur le bal qui a l'air de bêter parce que le mur n'est pas ouvert. On va, on va être assez, assez, Ouh, assez greedy de la part d'Exil. Pour flingue de la part de Linux, il va tuer le top landing. On a l'information. Attention. Wax va faire un, un gros shot sur le gars sur Volt. On a 30 secondes. Remaining. Première smoke qui part. Wax ouais, assez low HP, je pense pas qu'il va être capable de plein. Il va vouloir vraiment y aller, rentrer, faire des kills si on veut tenter quelque chose. On va faire une nade, oh. malheureusement la nade ne va pas marcher. Mais on va réussir à avoir le trade sur Wax avec le shotgun de Linux. Très beau rang de sa part jusqu'à maintenant. Linux avec la triple. On va voir qui va rentrer dans Sony, il va faire le premier, mais ce sera voyant de voir wow. le deuxième. Gros trade de Scorp, mesdames et messieurs. Quasiment plus de kills que, que de son autre game, mais bon. Let's get it, Scorp. Wow, quel round. Je veux dire, la Likus Empire est en contrôle total de cette round. Aucun... Euh... Aucun défaut. Quel non, équipe. très très bien joué de la part de la Likus Empire. Ils ont extrêmement bien joué en équipe. La communication avait l'air bonne. Puis euh, on va y aller du côté de Trophy Room cette round. Avec une, 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 euh, une composition assez hors du commun, comme j'aime l'appeler. On va probablement essayer d'avoir le closet avec la Frost. Peut-être un shotgun. Mais d'habitude, quand on veut faire ça, on ode avec un castle et peut-être une Wamai parfois. Fait que. Ah, oh, finalement, oh. on va bait le Old Master. On va y aller pour un pulse. Wow. On va plus jouer en dessous, la verticality, comme on dit. Je sais pas si c'est un mot, mais ça doit en être un. On sait que Bridge était dans TBG bien avant. Il savait qu'il hold le closet avec Frost. Ça doit faire partie du bait, j'ai l'impression. Assez. Euh... Écoute, euh, probablement. Je vais de voir à quoi le setup des défenseurs va ressembler ici avec le pulse, etc. On va probablement renforcer des murs dans le dining pour essayer de jouer le plus de verticalité possible. Peut-être pas. <rire> Assez oh, basic pour l'instant. On joue avec Valkyrie, pulse, vraiment beaucoup d'intel. On va essayer d'y aller pour les C4 kills par en dessous. Hmm. Intéressant. Bridge qui est toujours caché. <rire> Bridge qui est toujours caché en dessous. On va essayer. <rire> Bridge qui est toujours caché, qui cache son pulse. Belle stratégie. On a Scorp qui rompe euh, dans, le... dans le basement encore. Oh, il va retourne son spawn Assez oh, greedy. Subside, subside. On le sait que ça peut marcher. On le connaît. Et non. C'est vrai qu'il va passer à droite. Malheureusement, bien essayé encore de la part de Scorp. Mais c'était trop long. Bridge ne semble pas avoir été droné. Je pense qu'on va avoir la. L'avantage de la surprise, ils vont pouvoir jouer en dessous avec les C4, ça va faire extrêmement mal si les défenseurs drone mal. En effet, Wax qui va rappeler sur le toit. On semble y aller d'un du, push côté study pour les attaquants. Assez intéressant ici. Les drones qui sont lancés. <rire> la Une insertion fille. assez assez basic, on va y aller pour un study takeover. Ça, ça veut dire qu'on va probablement essayer de take. Ta gueule! Dans ces combats, on va essayer de take jusqu'à, euh, comme on dit, landing puis euh, statue. Fait qu'on va essayer de planter sur le bord de la statue. Mais ça risque de pas marcher si on joue les C4 comme on a dit tantôt par en dessous. Un split take aussi, qu'on peut voir avec, une... avec un ace qui est sur le balcon master. Il va tenter d'ouvrir le wall pour holder un cross. Reste à voir si ça va marcher. Et Scorp qui va faire le premier kill sur l'AF. Wow! Bien joué de la part de Scorp. Incroyable. Assez agressif, mais écoute, ça fonctionne. On continue. Puis, euh... Si ça fonctionne, ben c'est ça. C'est pas qui. Je sais pas si tu vois le chat, mais ça fait vraiment euh... aussi. Et Wakaja qui est caché, il semble s'avoir fait droner. Je pense qu'on a l'intel dessus. Et Wakaja non, Wakaja qui a fait Wow! Finalement, n'aura pas été droné. Bien joué de la part de Wakaja et il a raté Oh, finalement. Exil qui swing le Ace Master. 2v5. 1v5. Double kill de Wakaja! <rire> Wax, l'association d'un v dans le test, je dois monter les reds, il n'a pas l'information sur les gars, il va la prendre, malheureusement, Miss les shots, il va prendre son Oregon, il va viser un peu partout, c'est pas trop ce qu'il fait. 
Bon, attendre l'information. Oh, drop de chance, t'as assez grady du côté de la cus. On est partout, c'est bon, 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 c'est donc on va aller ouais, dining room kitchen. Seulement Bridge. relativement euh, 3-3 comme j'aime l'appeler. C'est pas une map vraiment trop defender sided. C'est pas une map trop attacker sided. Mais ça peut faire soit un K2 ou un 3-3. Donc j'espère que du côté de TBG, on va essayer d'aller. On va, on va essayer d'y aller pour un 2 ou 3 rounds à l'attaque parce que c'est assez nécessaire pour gagner dans ce map-là. Puis euh, on semble vouloir briller la Q, on a compris qu'il faisait des, des plays avec le pulse et la Valkyrie. C'est une très bonne, très bonne adap adaptation du côté de TBG ici. Fait que bien de voir comment ce round va se passer pour un dining défense, si je m'abuse. Exactement. Donc on a bring le castle, comme tu l'as dit. Euh... Je l'ai pas dit. Parfait, mais là je l'ai dit. <rire> castle qui va être euh, très utile pour holder le top. J'ai l'impression que ça ressemble à ça. Scorp sur le bandit qui va, j'imagine, bandifier les walls. Euh, statue. Bandifier. Eh oui. Je vais inventer des mots. Insertion. <rire> Intersectionné, on me connaît. Eh hey, oui. Semble être... hey, on semble se recacher avec le pulse, <rire> mais en plein milieu de l'Halloween. Caché dans les plantes, tu connais. Et. Je suis curieux de voir okay. comment le hold of floor va se faire ici. J'ai l'impression qu'on va essayer d'y aller pour un hard hold, ça veut dire qu'on va essayer de jouer nos vies plus que fall back on site. C'est pas quelque chose qu'on voit souvent, renforcer les trois murs de master. Mais ça peut le faire si oh, jamais. Score. On le connaît, le storm spawn kill. Oh non, man, il le fait pas. Oh là là. Je pense qu'on était au courant du côté de la TBG. <rire> on ne spawn pas là comme on dit. Bridge au shotgun. On est pour un pull shotgun, ok. Wow. Okay. J'aime ça. Ça semble être un take pour un pinch take sur ma buse. On regarde comme faut les attaquants qui ont spawn nous. <rire> on essaye du moins. Donc euh, en effet, on a Donc, Ça va être un master attaquants. take finalement. On va essayer de clearer les joueurs au top. C'est assez compliqué avec les murs bandits, il faut qu'on aide over pour get the wall. C'est euh, assez compliqué si on a une coupe d'ADS, mais ça se fait. C'était possible, hein, comme on dit. <rire> Écoute. C'est la sorte qu'il va jouer au top avec Wokoja. Wokoja, assez agressif dans les Astro Stairs, comme on peut voir. On va sûrement essayer d'aller pour faire un first kit pour après fast back. On a, on a Laf qui joue du côté Astro, on va essayer de push through avec. Je sais pas ce que je dis pas en tout. E push trophy, pas astro. On va rentrer finalement, on va essayer de get le kill. On voit qu'il y a personne. On a pas d'informations, pas de drone en avant de nous. C'est assez dangereux. Mais finalement, on va get les bandits du mur. On va prendre du dégât du côté Wakaja dans les Astro Stairs. La fois, faire le premier kill sur Linux. La refrag de Exil sur Wax. Attention, qu'est-ce qui se passe 4v4. 1m34, V4. Linux mort, Wax mort. L'IQ, le castle of the board. Euh, avantage aux défenseurs ici, l'IQ qui est un excellent pick pour le pulse. On pourrait juste fall back puis jouer. Dans le site en crossfire, ça pourrait marcher. Malheureusement, le Jaeger qui a été spoté par le Jackal dans le living room, est-ce qu'on va essayer de le clear Je n'en ai aucune idée. Très intéressant ici, le Jackal qui prend l'information. Scorp qui swing, wow Qui va tuer Laf, wow, incroyable. Il s'est psy, actually, désolé, je me suis trompé. On me. Scorp qui est très low HP. 4v3 pour la Likus Empire, qui sont en très bonne position. Pour Koja qui est probablement pas droné. À l'instant où on se parle. Euh, Scorp. Par contre, on va un Scorp vraiment low HP. Il va falloir vraiment faire attention à comment on joue là. Peut-être se cacher dans un coin et attendre avec son teammate en crossfire pour être la solution ici pour gagner le round. Euh, on a toujours une très bonne position de la part de la Kus. On joue dans le mode. Bridge va faire le premier kill avec son pistolet sur oh. le. Peut-il peut faire le deuxième Je sais pas. Il va, on va pusher le deuxième. Là, va get le kill sur Pulse. Mais finalement, là, on va se faire down. On va get la refrag du côté Wakaja. Très bien joué. Situation de 2v1. 3v1 finalement, 2v1, on a Christo Wall en 1, en, en, en position, en, euh, voyons, Chris le tabarnak, en position de on va pas chier, on va le kill, wow, Mais, malheureusement, oh, wow. Wakaja va faire le kill par mes mots, <rire> quel round, encore une fois de la Kiss qui est en pleine position de ses moyens, c'est 3-0, écoute, il euh, faut vraiment que TBG s'adapte dans, euh, dans leur tech, on voit très bien ici présent que euh, la Kiss et Paris sont vraiment agressifs, il va falloir être soit être plus agressif que les autres ou jouer plus en équipe pour get les refrags sur ces joueurs-ci. L'impression que Wokoja a alimenté sa team. Euh, très bon pick-up de leur part ici, de, de la part de Likus Empire, qui ont été chercher un gros joueur en Wokoja. Joueur extrêmement euh, talentueux. 
beaucoup de beaucoup d'aim, gun skills incroyable. J'aime j'aime voir ce joueur jouer. Yes. Merci de m'assister. Écoute, <rire> je suis là pour toi. C'est bien. Euh, Elle s'explique ouais. nomade pour Ace. Assez étrange, mais on va le prendre. Aviator, encore, même setup, même line-up, si je peux me permettre. Donc, euh... Ouais, donc on va sûrement la... refaire la même chose. Côté Lacus, on va sûrement retenter la même hole. Si ça push Master, on va sûrement retenter les euh, ADS et Shield de l'autre côté. Mais je suis confiant que s'ils jouent en équipe comme on joue le premier round, ils vont encore sortir victorieux de ce round. Il euh, faut vraiment que TBG euh, joue en équipe et comment dire, drone plus j'ai l'impression, j'ai l'impression qu'on essaie de rentrer sans information, prendre des kills, mais au lieu de ça, il faudrait droner puis plus euh, pour y des, des refrags. Bien dit William, j'allais dire Écoute. pareil. Alors puis penses-tu que TBG vont faire la remontada comme on dit? Euh, ça risque d'être compliqué, on a un Wokoja qui est en feu présentement, un Scorp qui hit ses shots, euh, on... Tous les éléments sont là pour que TBG. On va être le faire à Spankill. Est-ce qu'on est le score pour pistolet On va le tenter. Le study Spankill. Le, con... le... le Spankill assez connu. Running go. Roulement tambour. Même si. Oh. 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 Wakaja qui va être en, dans le club oh présentement, il va aller dans le Red Hall pour essayer de faire des, euh, comme on dit, euh, chase les rumors, les rumors, what the fuck, oui, oui. chase les, les entries, on va essayer de shooter des drones, c'est vraiment dans ce jeu-là, la base, shooter des drones, ça va te faire gagner des rounds. Ok, ah. William, <rire> très d'accord avec toi, on a, on a un, des, un setup assez, euh, assez bien assez parti. Assez basic. Euh, oui, en effet. Donc, la va se prendre les premiers dégâts côté study window. On, a, on va se mettre un en... study push. C'est ça, coupe moins. Oui, ouais, vas-y, continue. Non, non, vas-y. <rire> on va prendre un angle, un angle assez agressif côté score. On va faire les premiers dégâts sur Crystal Wow. On va essayer d'ouvrir le mur côté. Euh, c'est quoi son nom T'as peu, t'as peu, t'as peu. Crystal euh, c'est ça. Crystal Wow. C'est ça, Crystal Wow encore. <rire> Assez agressif du côté de Scorp encore, j'ai l'impression qu'on va vraiment jouer le top main à vie. On va rentrer, get le first kill Scorp. Attention, on va essayer de fall back, fait le premier kill sur l'AF. On a toujours le shield, on est en très bonne situation pour Scorp. On n'a plus de plus de Zofia, plus de nade, on est extrêmement bien placé du côté de Scorp pour euh, hold le top main. Dans ces moments-là qu'on reconnaît notre Scorp québécois, je veux dire, très bon joueur, hold sa position. Agressif, Excellent. on aime ça. Exactement. Oh, et ouais, c'est le kill de où? Il est où? Il est 90! Wow! Il pourrait faire très mal à cette équipe. Situation de 4v3 pour la TBJ. Ils peuvent mettre leur première round dans cette deuxième map. Oh, et le confight remporté par Psy contre Bridge. Linus qui va instantanément reprendre le refrag sur Munchies. Linux c'est score, pas situation de 2v3. Oh! Et est-ce qu'il va smoke le backpack à Linux? Wow! <rire> score en 1v3, va-t-il le faire pour donner un autre round à sa team? C'est la question. On plane assez, assez tout seul du côté de Crystal War. Score va essayer de pousser le box, va essayer de faire son premier kill, malheureusement, il sera pas capable. On push, on va essayer de tuer les gars dans mais malheureusement, ça est là pour la refrag. Wow! Bien joué de la part de l'âge. C'est le premier round pour TBG. Écoute, le round euh... qui semblait s'en aller pour la Lycus Empire, mais qui. Mais Wax tombé, qui euh... sort de nulle part pour faire ah, la avec... double kill 90, wow, Incroyable. bien joué de la part de Wax, incroyable. Il a vu une, op... Il a vu une opportunité, il s'est lancé, quel homme. Incroyable. Wow, et Bridge qui va prendre une Frost, j'imagine la 6 pick encore une fois, ou la garder, ça peut être un ah, Bien vu, il peut faire les deux, bien, bien joué Pépin. En effet, merci, merci. <rire> et va-t-il le 6 pick, telle est la question. Non, ça c'est non. <rire> Et semble qu'il va la garder. Il la garde. Un non, on va changer smoke. Un smoke. Oh, c'est assez rare ouais. pour une Melusi. Assez intéressant. On... C'est très intéressant. Pendant qu'Exil euh, parle dans le chat. Oh, pour un Wamai finalement. Wow. Extrêmement bien passé de la part de Linux. Je sais pas si je suis pour avoir vu la Ying, mais c'est extrêmement bien joué. Ça va complètement counter la défense, l'attaque comme on dit avec la Ying. Euh, J'ai l'impression que ça risque d'être un master take avec la ying comme ça pour essayer de push vers le, le astro. On va essayer de ying astro le plus possible pour pouvoir prendre le contrôle. Fait que j'ai hâte de voir qu ce que ça va donner. En effet. Euh... Désolé, faut que je réponde dans le chat. Je me fais. <rire> je me fais slender. <rire> je me fais slender. Donc, Bridge avec sa frost, comme on l'a dit. Euh, joueur très polyvalent, Bridge. Il peut jouer tout. 
comme un castle, comme un, une frost. Trop très polyvalent. Ouais. ouais. C'est ça. Donc, euh, on sait que Bridge va probablement exactement holder le closet comme qu'on l'a dit. J'imagine qu'il y a un shield. Il va le mettre directement dans la deux closet. Un peu bizarre. Étant donné que les ADS sont en arrière du shield. A voir euh, ce que ça donne. J'ai remarqué qu'on a aucun ADS pour la master window. Fait qu'on pourrait get le shield assez facilement. Juste avec un H ou une nade. Ça pourrait faire très mal. Il y a des mais en Effectivement, effet. Effectivement, mais j'ai l'impression qu'il n'y en aura pas. En effet. Et Wokachak va faire le premier kill sur la, sur la zoof. Wow, quel joueur agressif. Le spawn pig qui va marcher. Oh, Munchie On dans a la window astro. Oh! Un goal est très difficile. Moi, tu, à tu jouer. peux faire très mal dans ce goal-là. On sait qu'il y a un gars dans Batchoom. Est-ce qu'on va être capable de le sortir? Ce gars-là, plus lui du closet, sont vraiment assez importants. On a toujours la ying en vie, donc ça peut faire extrêmement mal. Malheureusement, on a perdu deux Zofia Stun, deux Impact, donc ça peut faire extrêmement mal. En effet. Puis, euh, euh, en effet. Manque d'utilité ici. Euh, ça risque d'être euh, rough. Pour, euh... Assez particulier, les... on a remporté Ouh. les 3 murs de Batchroom, finalement ça va en être effet. un 3v5, Linux qui va faire son premier kill, euh, son premier kill, le deuxième kill du round sur, euh, sur Psy, la hache, on n'a plus aucune utilité à part la ligne, on va y aller le casette, on va rentrer, on va push you malheureusement. Et Bridge qui tient tout partout, oh, et Bridge qui va réussir La ying va devoir la faire de la tion pour pouvoir tirer dessus parce que j'ai l'impression qu'on a whiff. C'est pas juste une impression qu'on a ici. <rire> Linux qui... Va jouer, qui va battre en retrait en Astro et SCORP! Oh! Malheureusement, va se faire turn par Christo Walk qui est dans une meilleure game qu'on a vu tout à l'heure. Va-t-il pouvoir le faire la 1v2? On est du côté de Batch, on va, on va tenter d'aller chercher le Diffuser par là-dessus. Finalement, non, on va tourner. On va essayer. On. Faut arrêter de me contredire. On est allé chercher le Diffuser. On rentre, malheureusement. Allez, Nix, assez agressif, va se faire tuer. Et quel jeu de la part de Wii? Christo Walk, Christo Walk. Christo Walk, Christo Walk. 1v1, va-t-il le faire la clutch? Le clip, malheureusement. Walker Jack, le kill, Walker Jack est en fire. Wow, mais quel joueur anglais, mesdames et messieurs. Le seul anglophone dans l'équipe, donc on a été obligé de switch les comms. J'ai ça comme ça. Et euh, voilà. J'ai l'impression que ça va vraiment grave. mieux avec le main roster que qu'un que, que sub, comme on appelle. Est-ce que Pépinon c'est sub Est-ce qu'on a l'information sûre sur euh, cette, euh, ce fait Good, William. Réponds à ma question. <rire> Excuse, je me fais ça ce C'était quoi ta question, Big est-ce qu'on a l'information sûre que Pepinos est sub de la Lucas Empire? Écoute, et pas non, c'est peut-être un six-man roster comme on a vu avec Mirage, avec Quartz. Euh, malheureusement, ce sera peut-être pas une affaire de visa, mais peut-être qu'ils ont juste remove lui qui ont le moins bien joué, ouais, bon. j'en ai vraiment aucune idée. Mais voit que euh, a vraiment été un update à la team, comme on peut dire. Il joue extrêmement bien présentement, fait les kills. Euh, écoute, fait gagner des rangs à son équipe très important. C'est maintenant 4-1. Si on est, on est en très bonne position de côté de la queue, si on est capable d'aller chercher ce cinquième round-là, ça peut être extrêmement fort. En effet, euh, Bridge qui va jouer le pulse, shotgun encore ou pas, telle est la question. Non, il va avoir eu l'MP. Donc, euh, un pulse. Ça Écoute, ressemble on... à le même setup, sauf qu'au lieu du Wamer, on a un pulse. On a encore Scorp sur Ella. On sait, Scorp et Ella, c'est une histoire d'amour, comme on disait tantôt. Euh... Ouais. Ouais, ouais, on va voir ouais. comment ça se finir. On a décidé de reinforcer les 4 quatre, les quatre walls cette fois-ci du côté euh, Steady. Au lieu d'en laisser un sauf euh, Games, I mean Aviator, pardon. Hâte de voir, Wokaja qui semble un peu lagué, comme qu'on dit. Donc, euh... Si on fait un tour scoreboard check, on a Scorp en 5-3, Bridge en 2-3, Exil en 2-4, Linux en 5-3 et Wokaja en 8-2 qui joue un excellent game présentement du côté de la Lacus. Pour l'inverse, finalement, on a Christopher en 6-4 qui fait une bien meilleure performance qu'on a vu la, 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 euh, la game. On a Mushis qui a une, une moins bonne game qu'on peut dire. Il a extrêmement bien joué map 1. On est en train, comme on peut dire, de tirer de la patte présentement. Mais bon, ça arrive. Wax en 4-4, Laf en 2-5 et Psy en 3-4. Mais l'action est recommencée. Faut que je, je m'afferme, comme on dit. Excel qui va avoir perdu des gars. Laf qui va être down par Curb Scorp. Extrêmement gros kick. On va perdre beaucoup d'HP. Malheureusement, on est trop greedy. On va mourir pour study. Wow! 4v4, 2 minutes 15 à jouer, il reste encore beaucoup de temps à l'attaque pour faire quelque chose. Qu'est-ce que t'en penses, Pépin? Ils vont essayer de bring la, la, la round back, comme on dit. Je veux dire, du côté des attaquants, on a perdu une Zofia, qui est beaucoup d'utilité. Par contre, on a des nades et on a encore deux Ash Charge. Donc, on peut s'en tirer. Le seul euh... problème que je vois dans ça, c'est qu'on n'a rien pour clearer euh, les ADS ou les Wamai. On a seulement deux Smoke. Donc, mm -hmm. euh, ça peut faire assez mal. On a Wax qui va encore une fois s'insérer dans le bac, on va essayer d'y aller pour des cheeky picks dans, dans, de l'autre côté. Donc euh, on va se droner, on, il va se droner lui-même. 
Puis il va probablement essayer d'aller push dans le back, comme on dit. On a encore une fois euh, Bridge qui joue en bas. Il va essayer de donner de l'information avec son équipe, avec son pulse exil qui va prendre encore beaucoup de dégâts. Est-ce qu'on va renforcer le mur Je pense qu'on devrait le donner. Et oui, c'est ça qu'on va faire. Ouh. Et Bridge avec la C4, comme j'ai dit, le kill sur Wax qui pushait dans le back. Extrême, un extrême bon pick pour, euh, pour la Kiss Empire ici. Belle adaptation du côté de la Kiss Empire qui sont adaptés à un solo push. Euh, du côté de Wax, qui l'a refait encore, qui s'est fait C4. Très bien joué. Et on est déjà in, non, 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 non. Wow, Bridge qui se fait atomiser, le pauvre. Et H qui rentre en site et qui se fait tuer par Linux. Linux, Linux, Linux. Linux. extrême bonne game présentement à 7-3. Finalement, on a Monsieur qui va ouvrir son premier kill sur Wakaja. Wakaja qui a été vraiment agressif ici. Finalement, ça va être une situation de 1v2. Va-t-il pouvoir le faire bring le, le 2-4 à son équipe? Ça va prendre ça pour son équipe s'il va avoir une chance de gagner cette partie. Sinon, ça va être extrêmement difficile. En effet. Munchies qui push Box. Un shield en pleine en face avec un Linux ou un Mobile Power beaucoup Exil. En effet. Ça se fait, écoute, c'est un clutch qui est très très faisable, comme on dit. Exil, 25 oh. HP. Quoi, il pète le Mute Jammer? Il y a peut-être un A sur le mur. Yeah. Bien, bien vu, William. Bien vu, écoute. Euh... C'est pour ça que je suis un caster. Exactement. Ça va, on pique malheureusement Exil qui va être une deuxième balle de shotgun sur Mishiz. Mishiz 1 HP, il va essayer de faire la cloche, ça, ça semble être encore plus impossible qu'au début. On va pre fire oui. partout. Est-ce qu'on va get le... On a vu son pied malheureusement, on ne pas l'avoir vu, on va rentrer dans, dans le map site. On a la bombe, on pourrait essayer un plan ici. Est-ce qu'on va pouvoir get son kill Non, malheureusement, on va essayer pour aller pour un plan. On a 5 secondes à jouer dans ce round-là, ça semble être impossible. Et la smoke, tu vas faire le travail. Waouh, bien Linux. joué, Nix. Wow. Quel jeu. Mais wow, écoute, Linux. écoute Linux, présentement, moi que j'ai Linux, sont en train de faire gagner leur partie à leur équipe. Ils jouent extrêmement bien, ils font les kills qu'ils ont besoin, with aucun gunfight, c'est ça qu'on aime voir. Le joueur support et le fragger qui font une grosse job présentement. Très intéressant. Et on voit un Wakaja sur un H, une H pardon, classique, on s'en attendait. Bridge sur une knock, oh, j'ai eu peur. Il va prendre le mal. Peut-être s'explique la knock. On sait qu'il aime beaucoup jouer de knock, le petit bridge. On a hâte de voir ça. En même temps, il est branded, je veux dire. Normal. Ah, oh, c'est un fait. Donc, on va commencer. <rire> Trophy statut pour euh, la TBG avec un castle. Reste à voir qu'est-ce qu'ils vont faire d'intéressant. Je me demande ce qu'ils vont faire avec un castle. On n'a pas rien pour le clodon. On n'a pas de wamai. Ça risque d'être assez compliqué. J'ai l'impression qu'on va peut-être plus essayer de jouer en dessous. Euh, côté de dining, etc. Mais sinon, Castle me semble vraiment être un useless pick dans ce site-là. Si on n'a rien pour rouler les comme des Wamai ou un Shield ou euh, n'importe quoi. C'est probablement un Extended, exactement. Ça extend dans ce avec Castle. On va probablement, probablement mettre une Castle. Bien vu, Félix. Nine Window. Ce qui euh, va faciliter la tâche des défenseurs pour rouler Nine. Donc, euh, bien hâte de voir qu'est-ce que ça va donner. Donc, on met un Castle Aviator Door. On va savoir où ils vont mettre leurs autres castles. Scorp qui se reprend bien pour une première partie en compétition. Très fier de lui. C'est bien repris de sa première map. Peut-être euh, arrêter de stresser pour cette deuxième map. Excellent 2-4, malheureusement, c'est pas quelque chose qu'on voit souvent de lui, mais on peut pas le juger avec le setup. Je sais pas si vous avez vu sur Twitter aujourd'hui, mais il y a vraiment pas un bon setup, donc euh, c'est un peu normal. Euh, écoute, on peut pas le juger là-dessus, fait que je vais pas trop parler de lui parce qu'on sait tout ici qu'Exil est un très bon joueur, très bon aim. Donc, on euh, peut faire la différence dans une équipe comme ça. Donc, euh, en effet, ouais. J'aurais pas dit mieux. Écoute. Par contre, Et... ce castle là, c'est pas vraiment un bon castle selon dangereux. moi. Euh, c'est ça, je vais dire. C'est vraiment un castle, je sais pas qui a pensé à ça. Freezing, si c'est toi. Faut... Non, c'est pas, pas la bonne ah, team. Même pas la bonne Laisse team. Laisse faire. Je me suis trompé. <rire> ça allait partir en ici. <rire> oui, non, non, je vais dire, retravaille les castles, mais rewind, rewind. Okay. Donc, ça semble faire qu'un push master du côté des attaquants. Peut-être un push kitchen aussi. Et. En effet, c'est qu'un push master. Aucune présence du côté study des attaquants. On a Wakaja ici qui va essayer d'aller en dessous pour clear, j'ai l'impression, le mieux du mur. C'est ça, si je m'abuse. Tu t'abuses. Écoute, je pense que tu me cherches. La nain qui va connecter sur que là, va faire le down. La, la nain, encore une fois, elle va, va get wow, le kill, mais va plus les deux et charge. Malheureusement, wow. ceci peut être très, très, très fatal. On sait pas comment est son mur, on dirait. On va faire un tour complètement. Évidemment, on savait qu'il y avait des impacts vraiment mal joués de la part de, 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 de Linux. Mais bon, c'est pas grave, on va essayer d'ouvrir le castle pour la question. On va l'ouvrir finalement en situation toujours de 5v4. On a seulement une, une porte open, il va falloir qu'on push oh. vers Batroom, vers Astro. Oh. 
ça me semble être un round assez difficile pour la Kiss Empire, même si c'est en 4v4 finalement. Euh, moi je sais ce qu'il va faire le travail en dessous, il va get son premier kill sur Wakaja qui va essayer de clear le mute, mais finalement on n'avait pas besoin d'aller là pas en tout parce qu'on n'avait plus rien pour ouvrir le mur. Donc euh, ouais. On a Christo Wow ici qui va holder la Master Door assez passif. On a Scurve va essayer de faire des dégâts malheureusement, on va perdre le gunfight contre le Castle qui jouait dans euh, qui jouait dans Astro. C'est rare que je vois ça, un Sledge qui fait un gunfight contre un Castle, mais bon ça arrive, comme on dit. Oh, il fait son double kill, wow, le wow. Ace qui va faire le travail. Finalement, on va rentrer dans le side, on va enlever son lésion, on va même essayer de planter. On a Bridge qui est dans le basement, qui baisse ses teammates. On a un qui va monter Astro Stairs. Est-ce qu'il va être capable de faire le kill? Bridge is... Oh, Qu'est-ce qui se passe? Ça va être compliqué. Ça va être compliqué. Quoi, ce round-là? Deux sous. Un gars sur le Master Wall, on risque de monter Red ou Astro du côté des attaquants et on monte Astro présentement, Exil qui attend son teammate, Mochis. Oh. Wow, galerie oh. fire à côté de Nick On a Wax toujours en 1v2, peut-il le faire Les deux sont low, Samson est une situation de cloche qui est très très faisable. On a plus de C4 malheureusement. On va attendre l'information pour euh, Wax, malheureusement. On va avoir l'information que les deux sont Astro Side, on va se repositionner. On sait qu'ils ont 15 secondes à faire. Oh. Malheureusement, les mecs, c'est le quartier Wow Incroyable les Mais quel joueur québécois le next up, le bon lot des, 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 des Ace, wow! Mais quel, mais quel job! <rire> Incroyable, Linux qui a complètement soulevé la daronne de TBG. Incroyable! Wow! Quel wow. Bon de Linux! Écoute, j'ai juste un mot, on l'a dit souvent. Wow! Wow! C'était ça, wow. une domination Total. sans précédent du côté de la Kiss Empire. <rire> <rire> T'as un problème? Alors, j'ai. <rire> on va bring le Wamer pour Aviator, risque d'être un old tough main, on n'a pas de chill cependant. J'ai l'impression qu'on va avoir un 6 pick ici. Vigil qui est assez useless dans une situation, si on veut old top main, est-ce qu'on va le 6 pick, je n'en sais trop rien. Oh, eh ben oh, oui, est-ce oui. qu'on va y aller pour, pour un, un shield? Pour un Goyo ou une cross, un eh oui. wow. Ah, oh, on est tellement les meilleurs caster man, genre ah, pour ouais. vrai, proster... prosternez-vous devant nous, on est juste les best. <rire> oh, c'est pas sûr. <rire> ah, je veux dire. Bridge en 3-4, on sait qu'il a connu une excellente première map, un peu difficile pour lui présentement, mais sa team gang c'est sûr, c'est l'important ici. C'est la joie de, de, de faire la, la map avec une bonne team. Le shield qui est un peu bizarrement positionné, je peux pas vous le cacher, qu'une impact en dessous puis Ça, euh... c'est ce qu'on appelle ne pas connaître ses shields, je t'invite à reviser tes votre review. Je suis pas mal sûr qu'il peut se faire... Non mais s'il met un impact en dessous du shield, il peut le voir le gars jouer en Ouais, il peut voir le gars. Très bien vu Pépin, très bien vu. Écoute, en aller sur repère. Pourquoi tu veux que mon famille en stream? Donc... Excuse-moi Félix. Ça semble être un... Study take si je ne m'abuse. Et Munchies qui va y aller pour un pick assez agressif. Et non, c'est un master take. Pardon. Je n'avais pas vu où qu'il y avait spawn. Crystal Walk qui va tenter d'y aller pour un pick agressif du côté de Master. Et Scorp qui passe assez proche de tuer le Wamai. Le Wamai qui va battre en retraite. Ça se dit pas. Moi, je vais avoir fait euh, une bonne jump du côté de son room. Va fall back vers Study. Va avoir pris un petit peu de dégâts cependant par la window en essayant de peek outside. Finalement, il va s'apercevoir que c'est pas une bonne idée. Euh... C'est ça. On a Waf qui joue du côté de euh, piano. On va essayer de faire une pression du côté de bottom main si quelqu'un essaie de rentrer par là pour clear euh, le shield, etc. Mais finalement, on va s'apercevoir très vite que c'est un master take, comme on dit. Donc, Nani va être important à hold, comme on dit. On Et peut euh... savoir que du côté des défenseurs, il n'y a pas beaucoup d'utilité du côté Nani. Donc, ça va être kind of free pour euh, les attaquants si on s'en rend compte assez rapidement. Il reste déjà une minute. Ah mais il reste encore une minute 45, fait qu'on est large dans le temps du côté de la... Ouh, un bizarre de ADS si on décide de push Teddy du côté de la table, mais bon. Et j'ai l'impression qu'on va juste ouvrir la wall 90 et try de force un plan peut-être. Ouais, avoir, écoute, euh, j'ai l'impression qu'on va essayer d'aller vraiment pour du default, on va essayer de planter euh, vers, euh, vers le vault, on va essayer d'ouvrir le 90, euh, le 90 pour co cover le vault comme on dit. On va avoir probablement un gars study rappel pour cut la rotation aussi, mais là c'est Christophe qui va prendre des dégâts cut top main, on pique pour aucune raison présentement. On sait pas trop ce qui se passe. Euh... Frisbee bizarre, on va en reparlera pas. 
Exel qui prend beaucoup de dégâts. Oh, et Waka Jack! Oh my god! Waka Jack qui s'est. Oh, il se fait une petite dame association d'un 2v4! Mais qu'est-ce qui se passe? Mais what? 1v2! Qu'est-ce qui se passe? Je que sa situation de 1v2 encore une fois, va-t-il le faire cette fois-ci? Je viens d'en citoyen, on a le diffuser cependant, on peut la jouer extrêmement intelligent et gagner ce round-là. Attention, 1v2 toujours. On a un gars steady, un gars nanny, on va essayer de le push en même temps. On va falloir jouer ça ensemble du côté de Scorpion Bridge. Effectivement, on va prendre des dégâts, on va essayer de pique, on va se repositionner close. J'ai pas l'impression d'avoir l'information. Oh, Scorpion Bridge, wow! Mais wow. Kill, mais game Game de la part de Lacus, écoute, je sais pas quoi dire, Peeps, mais qu'est-ce que t'en penses de la performance de Lacus? Wow, wow. Scorp, Scorp s'est vraiment réveillé. Wokaja a été en feu. Sans parler de Linux, qui est incroyable. Linux, incroyable. Wow, quel joueur, quel joueur support. Euh, écoute, j'aurais pas dit mieux. Il m'a surpris. Que, quel homme, j'ai envie de vous dire. Euh, wow! En effet, comme moi, que c'est dit, just bester. Euh, écoutez, c'est incroyable. Les Kiss Empire qui représente bien leur, leur nouvelle org. Euh, Là, vous pensez qu'il qu va y avoir des camps Ben, il n'y en aura pas. <rire> <rire> vous allez bien cru la chat. <rire> euh... Donc, euh, voilà. C'était ça qui était ça, man. Écoute, euh, j'aurais aimé caster plus de rendre avec toi, man, mais la Kiss ont décidé qu'ils ne vou voulaient pas nous entendre trop longtemps. En effet. C'est une très bonne performance. Euh... Écoute, Scorp en feu, comme on, on a dit tantôt, Bridge en feu, Wakaja en feu. Tout le monde a bien joué de la part de la Kiss. On a quelques retouches niveau strat à faire du côté de TVG, mais je suis confiant qu'ils peuvent être une excellente, équipe dans le, une excellente équipe dans le futur. En effet. Puis, euh, en effet, écoute. Euh, C'est ça. Euh, ça fait un plaisir euh, de, de caster avec toi, mon cher William. J'ai bien écoute, apprécié mon expérience. Pas de problème, mon cher euh, Félix. Tout le plaisir euh, a été pour moi. Je sais pas si euh, il fallait faire. En tout cas, que la prod, là, je sais pas trop ce qu'il faut faire ici, <rire> là.